squad coming into this game with a three and six record 0 and six in the southwest conference and as barry mentioned in our opening comments uh, seven and one just a year ago at this time texas six two and one four and one in the southwest conference and of course they have designs on the cotton bowl even though they're not talking about it yet our officials for uh, today's uh, football game the referee is dixon holman the umpire louis chaffel the linesman bobby ratliff the line judge roger rogers the field judge bill brown john lewis is the side judge and the back judge is larry weeks it's about 53 degrees uh, at the present time uh, in Austin. The wind's out of the northeast at 8, so they are negligible. 85% humidity. The temperature is not expected to get up more than about 57 or 8, as you see Jim Wacker trying to keep warm as he leads his coaching staff across the way. And, you know, it has been a cold season so far for Jim uh, Barry Warner, certainly uh, not one that he anticipated when uh, the club got off uh, to the start. Now, Wacker season. has taken a great deal of heat, but the man stands... Paul with that capital T. He knew what was going to happen when he booted those kids off the squad, and he hopes that the foundation has been laid. No question about it. The TCU staff has been so well received in homes throughout the, the state of Texas with regard to recruiting, Greg, and he knows beyond a shadow of a doubt the experience these guys are going to get now, two years from now when they come back in Austin. They'll remember when they may have been pushed around as a freshman. They certainly remembered last week in the ball game you and Ray Allborn did when they lost uh, to the uh, to Tolliver and the Texas Tech Red Raiders. The Longhorns, of course, heavy favorites, as they have been for about the last 18 years. Last year, the Longhorns won at 44-23, to 23, uh, which uh, was a little bit of a dent, but uh, it was a big win for Fred Akers. Fred uh, has his team uh, playing very well uh, right now. And don't forget, before the season began, so many of the so-called experts said, oh, middle of the league, wrong they're back up at the top of first second or third just like uh, they normally always are we're getting set for the kickoff texas uh, ward will kick off late way back jeff ward you think anything bothers him he hasn't changed since the time he broke in as a freshman it, it was number two against number three albert against texas and he goes what's the big deal it's just a football game nothing phases him at all he and his uh opposite number or rival on the other side Ken Ozzie both have a chance to establish some records today and if they uh, kick a few field goals we'll tell you about that getting set for the uh, opening kickoff as we have Petrie and Brooks back and it will be coming down at the goal line taken by Petrie Petrie turns the ball up to about the 23 yard line where it will be put in play first and ten for TCU at that position here's the expected offensive starting lineup for the texas christian university horn frogs coming into play today take a look at them in just a second as they huddle up uh, back on the uh, 15 yard line rasco david rasco the quarterback jeffrey and davis they'll do most of the running keith burnett uh, gary ford and ricky stone uh, will start reggie davis as barry indicated is not here due to a death in the family the offensive line laswell smith nicks uh, Sheehan and Brazil, and that's the change. Uh, Sheehan will not be in there, I don't believe, and Nix will be moved over to the uh, guard spot. Tracy Simeon will be in the middle as we get set to uh, get this game underway. Sheehan had a severe uh, shin injury last week and uh, not expected to see action. Now we have an injury on the Texas side already. See if we can't pick up who that is as soon as the number is uncovered. Hey, those, uh, those kickoff plays, and this one doesn't look too good. They're bringing a stretcher out. Those kickoff plays are brutal. Yeah, they don't call the suicide squad, Greg, for nothing. And Texas can ill afford with ball games coming up against the Baylor Bears and against A&M to lose football players. Akers has been very concerned about the lack of depth in this football team. Okay, the player down apparently is Al Powellek, a uh, senior defensive end out of Houston, Jersey Village, 22 years old. That's uh, the apparent uh, situation down there. Number 84, that's who it is. That's who is down. And they're taking their time with uh, Al. As well they should. They've got one leg straight, as you can see, so it uh, quite likely is a leg injury. It's very similar to what we saw last week to Tommy Sheehan, the uh, right guard for TCU. They, they took their time with him at Tech, and we thought he had a broken leg. As it turned out, he had a severe shin bruise, but he was, uh, they were very careful with him. 
Fred, of course, losing a member of his uh, kickoff unit. And uh, let's see. It's a very ominous way for a football game to begin. You know, you, you, you wait for that kickoff, you get things pumping, uh, the tickers are pumping on all these guys. They're ready to go out there, and all of a sudden, you got to hold the game up for a few minutes. We certainly hope that uh, the youngster is okay. We'll try to pass on any uh, preliminary report as soon as we get the information up on the field. Well, as you can see, they've got the leg elevator, and he does uh, draw a hand from the crowd as he leaves the field. Notice that uh, Reed is in for uh, Chalmer Adams. We haven't taken a look at the defensive unit for Texas yet, but there will be one change from what you're going to see on the screen. Reed is in for Adams at one of the uh, tackle spots, the right tackle spot, as we're all set to go here. First down now. Pat Bradford, number 32, is in the lineup. The give, however, goes to uh, Jeffries. Uh, Tony uh, will carry the ball most of the time, and he gains short yardage. Uh, pick of up about three yards on the play. Second down and seven. Greg, yeah, we're going to look at the same typical Texas defense, the 4-3. Bill Rett Royal ran it for years. Fred Akers does the same. So fundamentally sound. They probably make adjustments as well as any defensive scheme in college football. Gary Ford leaves the lineup. We've got the uh, two-man backfield as Roscoe is going to try to throw. Quick pass is, let's see, was he in? Roscoe's no, pass. he was not. It was uh, incomplete. Stephen Bragg was right there on the uh, coverage of the pass intended for Keith Burnett. So it's third down and seven. Now this uh, long yardage situation as we see the Texas defensive line. By golly, we got Rocky Reed in there. Rocky is starting at right tackle. McKinney, Espinosa, and Bronner, the rest of the people up front. High Allert, Hager, and Dulaban, the linebackers. Third down from the 28. As we have a third down and about seven. Rasko on the option. Pitches back. Jeffrey cuts inside. Only about a yard gain. He is brought down there by James McKinney, and it'll be fourth down. Also coming up was Richard Peavy from his weak safety spot, and TCU will have to kick it away. Fourth down. Fourth down. Chris Becker is in, and Metcalf is back to uh, return this uh, kick. Metcalf will take it at about the 27-yard line. Got a good block to swing to the outside, the 35, 40, and he's run out of bounds at about the 46-yard line. Eric Metcalf. Greg, by the time it's all said and done, Eric Metcalf may erase some of his dad's marks in the National Football What great quickness for the former Virginia High School quarterback. He catches the ball, not well. He doesn't let the ball come to him. He goes and gets it, waits for a while to start, and then accelerates. The kid can cut and stop on a dime. Got a good block there. And we're going to be calling his name for many, many years to come here in the Southwest Conference. He got a 20-yard return on that uh, punt. As you see, the ball spotted just shy of the 48-yard line, where it'll be first down for Texas, their first possession of the game. We have a apparently an official's uh, timeout down on the field, which is just about expired. 13 minutes and 47 seconds remaining in the first period. We're just underway. And there, of course, is no score. Texas first possession. Brett Stafford, the quarterback, running out of the I formation. He has Hunter and Norris. Norris, the fullback, directly behind Stafford. Stafford rolls left. He'll keep it. He's got the first down and more. Pickup of nearly 15 yards for Stafford. Run out of bounds on the far side by Philanda Newton, the free safety, but not until great yardage picked up. That was about a 12-yard pickup. Watch the pump fake here with the left hand. That makes the play work. He'll roll left. He's got pump it a little bit. All of a sudden, the safety clears out. The corner clears out. And Benson, who's their answer to the refrigerator, simply too slow from the backside. Not a bad block by Russell Hayes, number 14, the flanker. It's first down. Ball on the 39-yard line. And the give goes to Hunter. Hunter cuts back inside after the hole off tackle was closed. A pickup of only a couple of yards for Hunter. Mitchell Benson and Kent Trammell combining on that stop. Number 95, Mitchell Benson. There's the Texas uh, starting unit. Stafford, Norris, Hunter, McCray, and Gay. Edison, Chilton, Chester, Stewart, the Texas offensive line. And 
And uh, Rick Houston uh, was doubtful, but he is in the starting lineup. He had a pinched nerve in his neck. Second down and eight. Stafford's ball is in the air. Incomplete, just overthrown, intended for number 19, Everett Gay. Tony Brooks was nearby, but the pass was just a little bit in front of Everett Gay, who has uh, 17 receptions. That's tops on the uh, Texas team this year. One big problem the TCU has had, they give such a deep cushion on their secondary. They invite you to throw the square out pattern, and that stuff is open all day long. You can run the out, run the out, then route, run an out, and an up against them. But they're starting Brooks, number 15, the freshman, this afternoon. There you saw the starting line and linebackers on defense for TCU. Little swing pass is complete. That's Darren Norris, and Norris uh, is run down at about the 28-yard line by Tony Brooks, who made the first hit along with Garden Littles. Littles, the uh, strong safety, or rover, as TCU actually uh, calls him. Now what's Norris, the junior college transfer from California. Jasper comes back and he starts to move out a little bit. Much better throwing on the run. Norris has got those great fullback type legs. He's got better balance and direction than he would think for a guy as stocky as he is. 55% passer is Stafford, although he is quite a runner. First down. Give inside to Hunter as Hunter breaks across the 25 to about the 23 yard line. Pick up of maybe five. Ron Lewis, who is starting for Trent Edwards in this game. We had Edwards mentioned there, but Lewis actually drew the start because, uh, well, just a coach's decision primarily. And it'll be second down. Gain of four on that play, second and six. Ryan Manley's offensive line led by the All-American number 74, Gene Chilton, who's definitely going to be a first-round pick in the NFL draft. Wide receivers on both sides of the field now. Gay is on the right, the play goes to the left, and it's going to be short of the first down, I believe, as Hunter is backed up after a gain of a two or three yards. Newton and Little, again, the defensive backs making the stop. They're making a lot of the tackles early, which means Texas is getting that three, four, five yards on the play. It'll be a third down and two. There's the TCU defensive back uh, situation. Billy Jones uh, actually, I believe, was pulled out in favor of Tony Brooks. Uh, but Billy had been starting most of the year. Third down and two. Power eye formation on the short yardage. And a flag. That play doesn't yep. count. Looks like 81 McRae, who's starting in place of the injured William Harris, who's started high school in Houston, went off sides. That's a big uh, mistake for Texas. It will make it a third down and about eight, as opposed to third and a long two, maybe third and seven. But uh, in any event, it, it's a uh, mistake that will hurt them. Now they're bringing in the smaller receivers as Everett Gay and Russell Hayes come in. And a couple of the big guys come out. Ball start. Offense. Still third down. Third and eight. TCU's defense, Greg. Very young, very scrappy. They'll hang in there. If there's one problem, being young, being aggressive, being overeager, they're very susceptible to trap plays, especially with this veteran offensive line that Texas has. Gay wide right. McCray lines up tight on the left side. Now in motion, that's Hayes. And a fumble, but picked up by Stafford. He may, well, no, he may not. Well, he might make something out of that, but as it turned out, it uh, cost the Longhorns a chance to move in closer. Scott Harris on the stop. He did the wise thing there. He did not run try to make something when nothing was there. He took the loss and said it's going to be a long day. Well, it appears the ball hits the man in motion right there. Hits number 14 in the hip. And Brett Stafford, do I, don't I now? Better take Sack City and go down. So Jeff Ward will try a longest field goal. A 48-yard field goal. There you see the numbers on Jeff. Don't forget, he's got a 55-yarder that won the ball game against Arkansas. Oh, he can reach it. He's got the wind behind him, what little there is. And it's long enough, and it is good. So Texas on the scoreboard first. Texas three, TCU nothing, 10.05 to go in the first period of play on home sports entertainment. Greg, what's, a, what's impressive in a situation like that, Greg, is there's adversity. You're coming down, you get the punt, you're moving the chains, you're doing everything right. 
you have the offside, you have the fumble, and instead of something going for naught, you end up with three points on the board anyway. And Ward comes out, he's so automatic. Jim Wacker across the way yelling, hey, we're proud of you guys on defense. You took seven, which was possible, turned it into three. Jeff Ward now has kicked 15 of, or 16 of 21. He is just one field goal behind John Goodson's single season UT record of 17 set in 79. So told you we we're gonna talk about the kickers. Both kickers now are with, within one field goal of uh, some records. So uh, we'll keep you posted, certainly as the game continues. Petrie and Brooks are back to return the kickoff from Ward as we get set uh, to put the ball back in play. Texas leading 3-0 on the 48-yard field goal. 10.05 to go in the first period. The lights are on here on this gray day at uh, Austin. Yeah, you know, it's hard to know which coach believes in the power of positive thinking more. Wacker or Akers. Both of them are very positive, very optimistic. But Wacker's got to be telling his defense, hey, you guys held them. You did a good job there. And the kickoff will be returned. Taking it about the two-yard line. Brooks and Brooks fights for the 20 and that's as far as he's going to get. Stacked up by a pile of people on the special teams. Well, we'll mention Mr. Taylor, number 37, one of those that got there first. It'll be first down and 10 yards to go for the TCU Horn Frogs. TCU has not thrown the ball well this year. Raskin 45% on 54 out of 121. 789 yards, eight interceptions five touchdowns and there's the give inside for very short yardage maybe a yard or all or Bobby Davis uh, one thing that of course Barry it may maybe get you comment on this when you run an option type offense you're supposed to hold on to the ball and decide whether you're going to give it to him or not but notice we notice with TCU it's almost a wrestling match sometimes yeah there we saw also in the Baylor ball game where there were three times when the fullback took the ball much to the surprise and the chagrin of the quarterback it all comes with experience getting reps and timing only a one-yard gain this time. The pitch back comes to Jeffrey. Jeffrey gets one block, cuts outside, and only is able to gain a couple of yards. McKinney, 86, does a nice job of, uh, of stringing that play out, letting the cornerback come up and make the force, number six, uh, Stephen Braggs. McKinney... Uh, That's good coordinated defense. They'll go, to the, they'll go to the fake dive, the pitch. As McKinney holds his ground, says, I'm not going to be fooled. He boxes out the safety sacrifices of himself, and here comes Bragg up on the force. It's a third down and five. Ball on the 25-yard line, just across the 25. Two wide receivers at the bottom of the screen. Rasco's looking for the inside man. That's pass interference. Yeah, yep, flag Good call. As uh, tackling a little bit early that time was uh, Tony Tillman. I think also in there was, uh, let's see, was that? Uh, yeah, Tillman was in there, number 80. Or number 11. This one comes down in the category of take your pick where the flag is. He got Burnett is who he got. Yeah, no question. He got him there uh, in, in clear view of the official. We got a flag down where there could be holding up in the offensive line. Defense. Ooh. Automatic first down at the spot of the foul. All right. They just, I guess they both marked this. the same flag was for the same play, apparently. Rasko's got to have a big day throwing. He cannot be tentative. He's got to throw the ball with more zip. First down, ball up to 35. Rasko on the give, and Jeffrey struggles forward for about three. Brian Espinoza making the stop. He'll be a busy man. Brian will also read the uh, steel hammer if he gets in there. I know steel hammer was hurt a little bit. Those tackles, because PCU, and we've seen them in the last three or four weeks, really will run off tackle on that uh, give a lot. They're, they're satisfied with two or three if they can uh, if they can consistently get it. Wide to the top of the screen is Keith Burnett. Davis doesn't take it. Now does on the pitch across the 40-yard line to about the 42. He's still short of the first down by about two. Chris Dulevin, the... Uh, Wide, uh, weak side linebacker along with Richard Peavy in on the uh, tackle. Peavy is a great story. Here's a kid who started as a freshman, ripped up his knee, just making a cut. They never thought he'd be able to play football again. He, Edwin Simmons, Jerome Johnson, about 15 other tea sippers worked out with Tom Williams at Coach's Clinic during the summer. Peavy re rehabilitated the knee, and he said right from the start, I'm going to start and play football this year. Offense. 
Still second down. Well, you saw that. Uh, uh, as Barry was relating the story, it was a certainly severe penalty. Second down and more than 20. Is the 26 yard line. Second down. Rasko looks to throw, but the rush gets him. Banging through was James McKinney, the defensive left end, the Austin native, and it is now third down and almost forget it time. McKinney reminds me so much of Alan Level of the Rockets. When he's good, he's terrific. When he's bad, he's terrible. He, he comes free there, and you cannot let him do that. He's got great quickness. He's an Austin product, a big play fast rusher. The wrap on him, lack of consistency. One wide man on this, Keith Burnett, are extremely wide. Jared Delaney is also down. There's a little swing pass uh, deflected, taken off by Bobby Davis. Now, he's got to go past uh, the 45, and he's not anywhere close. He gets up to the 30-yard line and is run out. It's fourth down. TCU will have to kick it away. There's the disadvantage of those penalties. That was not a bad play, but they had to go too far. Chris Becker coming into punt. It's your basic naked screen there. There was absolutely no one home. They suckered him in okay, but there was no blocking wall out here. So after getting the big break on the pass interference, TCU can't convert. Metcalf back to receive the punt, which is high and relatively short, taken on the 30-yard line, and pick! That ball is loose and still loose, and TCU can't pick it up because the uh, Texas defender, there you see him, number 28, he just pushed the... Uh, he pushed now, the... Now, January, uh, the linebacker, makes a heads-up play here. He sees a touchdown right there for Texas. Metcalf, I got it, I got it. No, I don't have it. It goes right through my hands. TCU kicks the ball. So what does January do? Out of my way, I want the football. Yes, sir, it bounces right back to me. Thank you very much, and we'll take it. And that one play, Greg, can really typify how things have gone. Last week in the game, you and Ray Alborn did. There were three interceptions for Roscoe, and all of them were on deflections. Well, a clipping call. And that may have been on the push, Barry, because... Yeah, that, that's what the call was. You have to call something because you can't go out and start pushing around people. Fred Akers, the number 12 in his background, his son Danny Akers, who's been the holder this year for Jeff Ward. So this poor guy is sort of like Ray to Dangerfield. He gets no respect. He's won only 90 ball games here. He's had him on the verge of a national championship. He's had him in the Cotton Bowl. And people still say, what have you done for me lately? I think he's done a tremendous coaching job this year. And it's probably more gratifying this year for him uh, to see how a number of these guys respond to the previous Texas clubs. Flipping by the Orange team. Penalty declined. First down, Orange. All right, that had to do with where it took place, obviously, because it was upfield a little bit further. And so TCU decides to leave it on the 10-yard line where the play ended. Actually, that was an outstanding play by January because hey, if he doesn't do it, TCU gets the football. First down. Hunter is tripped up uh, just shy of the line of scrimmage. Charles Hunter, number 26, the ball carrier. David Spradlin, uh, who drew the start today in place of David Caldwell at the left end spot, the one who grabbed him around the ankle. They say that David can play anywhere. Did a pretty good job on that one, didn't he? 6'2", 230 pound junior out of Seminole, Texas. Second and 11. Hunter has been tough to stop most of the year. He's averaged five yards a carry. Second down. There's Stafford. High formation behind him. Again, to give to Hunter as he struggles for yards that weren't really there. He gained about three or four up to about the 14 before he is stopped. Third down. Crucial defensive series here for TCU. They got it back deep. They thought they had a touchdown. They can't let Texas they move out to midfield on this. They got to get in the punt, try to establish some decent field position, Greg. Kevin Dean made that last tackle. We might mention Kevin because he was uh, he was listed as doubtful for this one with a knee problem, but the doubts have been erased. Third down and eight. The rush is on. Stafford falls at the three. What another great defensive play by Spradlin. Spradlin does a heck of a job on that play. And you can see it right now. Watch how he gets mobbed when he runs over to that sideline. There's Brett Stafford. He's going to roll left. He's got a lot of protection. Here comes Benson coming in, but he's still out of shape. He can't get there. Spradlin, does he miss him? He says enough gets him uh, off his impetus 
enough to knock him down there, high five at the far sideline. Well, Peltic is going to have to punt from the three-yard line. That means he's going to be back the maximum distance he can be. And that bare foot is awfully cold right now. <laughs> he's wiping it off. Tony Brooks is a single safety at about the 45. He got the kick away, and he has kicked it past Brooks. Whoa, and Brooks is going to lay it down to avoid it. Texas get out of hole there. Picks it up in the 20. A flag is thrown. And I'm not sure why. I didn't see an offensive player, but we'll figure it out in just a moment. And we'll figure out exactly what the flag was for. I did not see uh, anyone clip. I didn't see another teammate nearby. I didn't see it at all, Greg. It looked like two Texas players. Well, here, let's see this ball. Two on the tackle. The 68-yard punt. We'll sort it out, and we'll be back. You stay with us right here on HSE. The Longhorns three, the Horn Frogs nothing in the first quarter. Getting from point A to point B isn't always so simple, especially in and around Houston. That's why you need a car like the Front Wheel Drive 86 Buick Century. New European styling on the outside, traditional Buick luxury on the inside. Best of all, your Houston Buick dealers have just received a special shipment of 200 new centuries. Better hurry though, they'll go fast. Because when point A to point B looks like this, anywhere in an 86 Century is simply a point well taken. I'm a peaceful man. I wouldn't hurt a fly. <laughs> but now I'm going to get out of line. I'm going to sign up for a direct deposit, so I'll never have to stand in line with my government check again. With direct deposit, my money goes directly to my account automatically. That frees up my time for other things. <laughs> like my experiments. <laughs> get direct deposit wherever you have your check in your savings account. <laughs> oh, come on. Get out of line. Back uh, as we uh, get set for the series from TCU, there was a quick call that you saw before we took the break. So the 68-yard punt plus the penalty. What a difference that was. Texas had the ball on their own three. Now TCU has it on its own 13. It's a big loose by Davis. And Davis gets down to about the 45 or more before he's run out of bounds. Chris Dillivan making the stop, but Davis, Bobby Davis, the freshman redshirt from Glenville, Texas, pretty quick runner for Great acceleration. Quarter. Watch the footwork here on the part of Davis. He bursts through, goes to the outside with a little stutter step, and this leaves PB, who's got excellent speed. The kid really accelerates. That was a 30-yard pickup for Davis, and it's first down for TCU. So that poor field position, forget it. As you see Davis' stats coming in. Rasco keeps it and meets his maker, so to speak, after a two-yard gain. Richard Peavy, the man who was beaten on that last play, wasn't beaten on that one. Peavy out of Houston, Washington. You know, it doesn't look like much on that last play, but five games ago, Rasco would have made that may have coughed the ball up. Now he's a little bit more poised. He's reading and reacting much better to the defenses. Well, he is going to play virtually every down. In fact, yep. if he doesn't play every down, they will not use... Ron Giles, who is the... Giles is a red shirt. Yeah, back at quarterback. They don't want to use him at all. They'll use the cornerback, which they did last week. There's a pitch back. And again, Davis is outside across the 45, down to about the 44. Richard Peavy making the stop. That is a first down. So much more confident is David Wasco, the freshman from Westchester High School. Just watch him right now. He'll run down. He'll take the dive on the zero option. He'll run down, get the commitment from Aldridge sacrifices his body, and Davis has got this tremendous footwork. First down, the ball on the, across the 45, that's about the 44-yard line. Yep, oh, we'll have a flag here. Yeah, we had the defense jumps, up. and of course they were okay, they got back, and that got the offensive line a little antsy, and so that'll be five against TCU, oh, I'm quite certain. Oh. Espinosa works, and then came right back. Knock off five, TCU will put the ball back on about the 49-yard line in uh, Texas territory. 3-0 is the score on a 48-yard Jeff Ward field goal at about 10.05 in the first period. We've got three minutes and 32 seconds to go in the first quarter now. It is still 3-0 Texas. Wacker calling the play, sending Burnett, uh, number 84, into the ball game. He's the kid from Houston, Houston Yates High School. His nickname is Sweetness. 
Because he's so sweet and under control. Runs like poetry in motion the way he glides. First down and 15. There's David Rasko. And a give inside for short yardage. Maybe a yard. That's all Bobby Davis. Ty Allard, the top tackler on this uh, Texas team, has 84 coming into this game. And I think that's his first of today. So we'll give him 85. That'll be the first of many. We'll be calling the number from the former Northbrook High School All-American. A real blue chipper, both on and off the field. A really classy human being who reminds me so much of Jack Ham, Greg, the former Pittsburgh Steeler great. He's going to have that kind of potential in the NFL. Bobby Davis doing well, you'd have to say. Nine yards of carry. Straight drop back now. Out of the pocket. If he can get past the defense, he's got some room, but he throws it in the ground. He couldn't turn the corner. He had a whole bunch of orange juice chasing him. Ty Allard finally the man that forced him out, but... If he could have turned the corner at about the 50, he might have had some room because the defense would have been behind him, as you'll see here. Okay. He makes the, the 360 turn. Here comes uh, Hager on the blitz. There's Allard we just talked about a moment ago. Taylor down from the backside. Espinoza right in his face. I better unload this football. And he grounded. He put it right in the dirt or in the AstroTurf. It's third down and 12. Texas, of course, plays so much man-to-man -man football. Burnett goes out on the right side, a little short pass inside, incomplete. That was intended for Ricky Stone, the flex end, but uh, Gerard Senegal was right there along with Kip Cooper, who was putting some pressure on it. It'll be a fourth down. So we'll have uh, Chris Becker in to kick again. And Eric Metcalf back. Metcalf had one go right through the hands on the last punt. He's going to fair catch it. At the 12. TCU doing a good job not allowing Texas good field right. position. And so Texas will come on. Next weekend, we'll be taking you up to Fort Worth and Eamon Carter Stadium as the TCU Horned Frogs take on the Texas Aggies. That game with uh, important ramifications for AM's bowl picture. We'll have it for you on a delayed basis next Saturday night at 10.30 and Sunday at 9 o'clock. That's Texas A&M versus TCU next weekend on Home Sports Entertainment. All right, partner, I'm going to put you on the spot. The game will be played tonight at Kyle Field. The Aggies against the Hogs. What do you like, Greg? Home game, I'll go with the Aggies. Okay, I'll take A&M by four. Michigan, 31. Minnesota, zero. I'll tell you, when we're doing one of these delayed games, Brad, everyone will remember that we're right or wrong. <laughs> Do these games live, no one remembers, but uh, boy, when they're delayed, they're, they're watching it, and the other one's almost, maybe almost over. It's 3-0 here with 2 minutes and 24 seconds to go in the first period. Texas leads. They've got the ball on their own 13. It goes to the uh, fullback hunter, or tailback hunter. He gets across the uh, 15 to about the 16, 17-yard line. Ron Lewis and Mitchell Benson in on the stop. Mitchell Benson, we talked about him last week with the touchdown. Uh, Fort Worth, the 200. They got him 265 pounds at the start of the season, so <laughs> Mitchell's put on a few. He had too so many meals. You know, the thing about him, he was a good basketball player. That's the thing. He really... And so was the refrigerator. Perry can uh, yeah. tough the ball at 6'3". Second down and six. Again, Hunter, he's got some room outside. He may have the first down. He's brought down right about at the 23-yard line. You saw the marker. That's not the official marker, though. It's on the other side. Floyd Carroll ran him down. They will... Uh, perhaps have to measure this. The official marker is on the other side of the field. It will be an official timeout. Greg, you spoke with Charles Center before the ball game. He appeared uh, almost surprised that he set a new freshman Texas record for rushing last week, didn't he? Well, he must not read the papers because I'm sure that it was in the Austin papers that he did. Yeah, he, he said that he didn't know it until I mentioned it. That's sort of unusual. He had 187 yards rushing last week, and that was the most ever for a Texas freshman. Yeah, there's depth on this Texas team now with Edwin Simmons able to play and, and Hunter and, of course, Metcalf, who's a speedster. They could put in there if they need him in there. Darren Norris. Fred Akers has never had this kind of firepower. And I'll tell you, you mentioned Mr. Simmons. We'll develop uh, the Edwin Simmons story a little bit later on. He is pointing for next week against Baylor and against Texas A&M. It is a real miraculous story on the comeback of Edwin Simmons. 
As you saw, it is just short of a first down, so it'll be a third down and about one. There, they finally changed. TCU staying in their basic 5-2 package. They've got the uh, power eye type formation, and the quarterback will keep it, and Stafford has the first down to about the 24 five-yard line. Stafford uh, knows what the comfort zone is. It's right off the hip of number 74, Big Gene Shelton, who is much quicker this year. He lost around 15 pounds. The strongest kid here in the uh, University of Texas football team. He will be a pro prospect in the first round. The big question there, Greg, do they play him at center? and make a Remington or a Mike Webster or a guard and turn him into a John Anna Mike Munch. Well, the thing is, it's not as much of a gamble as with some players because he's played all of those places in college. Uh, he's been offensive tackle and he's been a center. You see the give inside for a power move near the 30-yard line. Pickup of about five as Hunter again carries. That doesn't look pretty, there. but we're talking about Shelton. What do they do? They run right up the middle. No fancy blocking scheme at all. Liam Manley just said straight ahead, man blocking. And Hunter reads where the, where the crease is and just runs to it. Charles Hunter out of that, I guess you could almost call it a football factory at Odessa. Odessa Permian. Second down and five. And Hunter again on the carry, and they were waiting for him. He has stopped right at the line of scrimmage. Big Mitchell Benson comes through. The Fort Worth freshman. Now Mitchell, like so many of these TCU guys, is a true freshman. You know, he's bow-legged and does not look like he's an athlete, but he's very deceiving. He just sheds a blocker and just comes right through there, and uh, he doesn't have to worry about looking at the film. John Stewart's going to kind of uh, dig a little trench back uh, tomorrow when they take a look at that where he missed his assignment. They're down at five. Play action back to four. The looping pass is complete. That's Jerome Johnson, the uh, fullback, and he has run out of bounds at about the 43-yard line. It's a first down. Philanda Newton got to him, but not in time. As Johnson hands the ball for the handles the ball for the first time, and he has the first down. Johnson is a kid whose knee was so banged up they never thought he'd play. Worked out with Tom Williams at coach as they rehabilitated the knee, and he's got surprising speed. Good footwork there. Tries to avoid the hit. Very, very strong. I'm going to tell you something, Greg. He's going to end up in the National Football League next year as a fifth back for somebody. He may not get drafted at all, but he will make somebody's club because he's so fundamentally sound. Well, we've reached the end of the first quarter, and at the end of one, it is the Texas Longhorns 3, the TCU Horn Frogs nothing. You stay with us. We'll be back with more on Home Sports Entertainment. It's a special kind of spirit that rises in us all. We hear a cry for help, we're there to answer the call. We're a people who share triumphs, but we share our troubles too. It seems in times of need we're there to do all that we can do. is authorized under rights granted to home sports entertainment and is intended solely for the non-commercial use of our viewing audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of home sports entertainment is prohibited. The announcers for this telecast are selected and employed by home sports entertainment. And that means if you don't get Jack Stanfield's permission, you're a bad guy. You're in violation. He'll hit check. That's right. Three nothing. Texas leads. They've got the ball. Stafford is brought down from behind the line of scrimmage by that man, Danny uh, David Spradlin. He has had quite a first uh, half of play in the first uh, 16 minutes. 
A spatter has been all over the place today, starting in place of Caldwell. Kid has got excellent quickness and heart. He reads, comes right in there, and makes the leg tackle. And Mitchell Benson got through to put a little pressure on. That helped to uh, open it up to Spradlin. It is second down, loss of three, second down and 13. Wide receiver at the bottom of the screen is Everett Gay. Man in the slot, single running back. Passing formation, the ball is slipped out into the corner and complete on the far side. That was uh, Johnson again, and he picked up uh, maybe five altogether as he's run out of bounds on the far side of the field. Johnson is out of uh, pilot point, 219-pound senior. One thing about uh, Texas, and this is, of course, uh, an indication of the depth they normally have. You look at their roster, and you'll see a lot of seniors with either no letters or only one. And that's because there's always been enough depth at Texas that you don't play until you're a junior or a senior. And that's why uh, perhaps a lot of people misread this team at the beginning of the season. They looked at the numbers in the wrong way as far as who was coming back. They give inside to Hunter. Hunter struggles forward and will be stopped short of the first down by a couple. Mitchell Benson got him around the ankles and then got some help. Also uh, helping out on that play was Philanda Newton coming up from the uh, safety spot, holding them short of the first down. It'll be a fourth down and three along two, and we'll see the kicking unit led by Hunter John Telchik, who is averaging 44 a kick, uh, 43.2 his career average through last year, and he's upped it a little bit this year. I wouldn't be surprised if they tried to go for the block on a Telchik as a three-step kicker. He takes his time getting that ball off. It's the only wrap on him. Oh, no, they didn't this time. You can't allow too many more 78 yarders. This one won't be, but it may. No, what a good bounce it took for Texas, and it is killed at about the 14-yard line. And that was an outstanding kick and a great coverage by McCray, and it will be first down for TCU. Again, not in good field position, trailing 3 nothing. Well, they'll be uh, putting the ball in play on their own uh, 13. One thing I think Jim Wacker has to be happy with so far, Barry, is they have protected the football. The only mistake made, really, was by uh, Metcalf, and that was on the Texas side when he couldn't handle a punt, but it didn't really hurt Texas, as it turned out. TCU has played the game conservatively, but they have not made the mistake that's opened any doors. Well, their defense has played the type of smash-mouth defense that Wacker loves to talk about in his tremendously entertaining coaches show as Rasco tries the left side and goes nowhere. Take the handoff to the first man through, kept it, and was able to get back to the line of scrimmage, and that was it. Peavy and Bonner in on that tackle. It'll be a second down, and we'll stay with 10, even though he may have gained a half yard. You know, after the debacle last week at Texas Tech, Wacker got on his coaching show, and he opened it saying, hey, blame me. Don't blame the players. They gave it everything they had. I didn't do the job. You can't help but love a guy like that. Well, they ran into a hot quarterback. That contributed to their downfall, certainly, but they did only score seven points themselves, and so that uh, was sort of depressing as Rasko is buried back at about the 12-yard line. James McKinney coming through. This is a game for defensive left ends because McKinney on the Texas side has been prominent. Well, McKinney is so quick. Looks like he's got a little bit of a gut on him there. But he's got excellent quickness coming off the ball. Uses his hands very well to defeat the blocker. Wacker, I mean, uh, Rasco set, and it's Sac City. Just grabs the top of that jersey in the pad and brings him down. Those were his stomach pads, Barry. You, you got that wrong. He had his stomach pads on. I got you. Third down and 15. Rasco, a little oh. swing to the left. He's got Davis. Davis gets back to the line of scrimmage, tries to point out more, and has the first down. Nice running by Davis. Derek Jeffries finally brought him down. That's a very dangerous play. Ty Allard slipped and fell. That's why the play worked. But you're going across the seam and he throws that ball out there. Very easy to intercept. Looks right, throws left. Where's Allard? He tied, fell down. Now he gets up and, and chases in pursuit. But that's a very dangerous tight pass to throw there. 17 yard gain, first down. And we'll have a flag here. That appeared uh, certainly that uh, Texas was offside. Chalmer Adams. Chalmer was, uh, did not actually draw the start on the first series of uh, downs uh, today, but he's been back in there. He began the year as the only experienced defensive tackle. But again, that's, that, that's sort of misleading, as we said before, because there were other players on the 
Defense outside, still first down. I'll tell you, Fred Akers has got a couple of young kids you're going to hear from for years, and Finn and Hennicek, and in big guy uh, Ed Cunningham, the 6'8", 275 pounder. First and five. It's first and five. What a good position for an offensive team to be in. Going to try to use it. He's got a man. It's complete to Gerard Delaney at the 32-yard line. Stop. That pass was right in the perfect location. Well, Delaney's the kid from the Houston Madison High School. He lacked confidence at the beginning, but he's got deceptive speed. And watch how he accelerates to the ball. They freeze the defense just a little bit. Rascal puts that ball up there. And he just glides behind uh, double coverage for a huge gain. 37-yard gain on that play. First and 10, the ball on the 33. They give in to Jeffrey, and Jeffrey gets 10 more. Across to about the 23-yard line. Mark Petrovich, the backup middle linebacker, making the stop. Well, this TCU football team uh, has not scored yet in this game, but they already look like a much different team than we saw last week. Well, Davis is a darter the way he just explodes right there through that. He's a typical U of H type back that we've seen. You give him a little bit of a crease, and boom, he can hit it up there and turn. The numbers on the board show you that TCU has been able to move the football. First down. Again, Jeffrey, he'll struggle forward to about the 19-yard line to pick up with four more off left tackle. You know, the season started with Jeffrey, who was the Southwest Conference Newcomer of the Year last year, having all these expectations and the great job he and Davis would do. So Kenneth Davis goes out, all of a sudden he's the main man. And there's no question that he missed Davis and realized by about the time the Arkansas game rolled around, hey, I got to be the main man. I got to do it myself. All right, it's a second down and seven. Float pass complete to Davis, but he's covered. He drops the football. Did he drop it? Did he have possession? The officials say that he did, and he dropped it. It's a fumble, and the turnover goes to Texas. Wacker is sitting there yelling at the officials. Hey, wait a minute. I don't know That's if they've made the decision ball. on this yet. They may not have made the decision on this yet. I think Texas's offensive unit did, but uh, they're not the ones that count. No, it's the people in the uh, stripes, and they're going to talk it over. Well, if it does work against TCU, that's... Oh, look at Wacker. He is upset. Here it is. Now, what do you think? Does he have control of this football? He's got it there. He's got the possession. He yeah, turns. Yeah, he did. He has a good call. Well, then they just strip them of the football. Petrovic strips him with a hand, and TCU loses the ball. Jim Wacker was irate. The replay... Uh, seem to indicate that he had the football. The only caution I always have on replays is the fact that they're when they're slowed down, it gets your sense of timing off a little bit, but he did appear he to have that possession football. and he turned up field with it. First down. Give inside to uh, the fullback Johnson, and boy, you talk about smash mouth defensive football. Tech seems to be... Uh, Extremely fired up after that turnover. Kent Trammell led the way, but he had a lot of help. Trammell, an emotional football player, was not supposed to play. He's been having a cartilage that's been locking on his knee, but he gutted it up and dressed out for today's ball game. And all he's got to do is go head up over uh, Gene Shilton. Second down at eight. Two men wide on the bottom of the screen, out of the eye formation. Take give, roll left, little dump pass complete. That's going to be a big gainer. That's Tim McCray, and McCray gets down across midfield. Ricky Rugely came up to make the stop. Perfect timing, perfect execution. McCray, Houston Smiley High School, Greg, gets the stop because of William Harris has got that injury to his arm. They block him straight up, and then he, sl and he slides underneath the coverage, loses the linebacker, no one home at all. Protects the football well and has the first down. 22-yard pass. The key play on that was the block that slowed down the right defensive end, Floyd Terrell. He might have had a shot at the quarterback. He wasn't knocked off the play, but he was slowed down just enough. First and 10. A slip by Hunter, and he'll be stopped right at the vicinity of the line of scrimmage at midfield. 
Mitchell Benson was there, but actually Hunter knocked himself down. Eight minutes and 15 seconds to go in the first half. 3-0 Texas. Longhorns have the ball at midfield. It'll be second and 10. I keep waiting for Texas to put the ball in the air to number 19, Everett Gay, the former basketball star at Houston Wheatley High School. Number 19 playing to the top of the screen. He is a great leaper, as you might imagine, after being a basketball star. They're going to go to the short side of the field. Hunter, there's a flag down. Hunter got some running room. He shot the first down, but it may be coming back. We will see. The flag was thrown at about the line of scrimmage. Floyd Terrell on the stop. And judging by the way that uh, Dixon Holman is trying to calm down TCU, it appears that it's going to go the other way. You can tell us how, how revved up TCU is. Every single play, they're playing like they had a cotton ball berth at stake and they're trying to protect some turf. You would not think this is a football team, just, well, there's the reason why. Look at how emotional Wacker is. <laughs> how do you not play charge up when you got a guy like him as your head coach? Well, there were two penalties, as you saw, one on each. And that's going to set us back and do the play all over again. Well, or is it? Let's see. I thought that's what his signal was. We'll get the explanation here. And holding off. We will now enforce dead ball personal foul against TCU. Well, they had explained it very well. The second penalty was after the play, so that's why they marked them off both. So Dixon Holman is sort of like Jim Tunney of the NFL. When he works the football game, you know he is in total control. Defense. Still second down. Actually, Texas ends up gaining five on the play or losing five, depending on how you look at it, because they ran the ball out five more yards. But they're five yards further out from where they were at the original line of scrimmage. Two wide receivers at the top of the screen as fairly long count by Stafford. The give goes to Hunter. Hunter is short of the first down. It'll be a third down and about a yard. He went right up the middle and uh, got four of those five he needed. Greg, as we said at the start of the ball game, one of the real fears that you have with a young, aggressive, enthusiastic football team defensively like TCU has, they get so over-eager they set themselves up and they're easy to trap. We'll see if Texas's line coach, Leon Manley, makes some adjustments there. Third down and one. Everyone's going to be tight now. The tight uh, all right side formation. Double tight end. And a first down, maybe. Just barely for Darren Norris. Darren Norris he needed uh, a long one, and he looks like he got a Kevin Dean on the stop. They may have to measure. Depends on where the ball is spotted. I think he got it. Oh, no, he did not. Not where they spotted the ball, he didn't get it. I thought he went farther than that, Barry. I thought he got the ball uh, over the 40-yard line, but uh, they've got it spotted right smack dab on the 40. Let's see if we can tell on this uh, low shot. Excellent block in there by Ergo. Well, that one line was the 40, but we'll sort it out, and we'll be back. So you stay with us. 6.23 to go in the first half. Texas 3, TCU nothing on Home Sports Entertainment. Seems like everybody wants to be a star these days, on the field, with the girls, whatever. Take it from me. Drugs don't make anyone a star. They don't get you the touchdowns or the girls. They just get you in a lot of trouble. You want to be a star? You want to go to college and play a little ball or play the piano? Drugs are just going to get in your way. Look for your fun somewhere else. Make your name through something positive, and it'll be a name they'll want to remember. The preceding message provided by the NCAA. 
Fred Akers was having a few words uh, with the officials for a moment, uh, I think probably having something to do with the spot of that ball. It's now fourth down. And this comes under the category of no-brainer. You go for it. Do not pass go. Well, Texas, a football team that can control its own destiny, they can claim a share of the conference crown and the Cotton Bowl if they beat TCU, Baylor, and they win at A&M on Turkey Day. Those are a couple of nice hits. <laughs> Stafford again to keep, and that's going to be close. I don't that think is going to be close. I don't know either, Barry. I'll tell you, if they spotted the last one where they did, then he didn't make it on this one either. Really, again, it depends on the spot. You see how the staff has got a hold whacker back? How intense and enthusiastic is that man? They'll pull the chains out. Ooh, that's close. If Nick. the uh, orange uh, marker on the far side is, is centered as it's supposed to, that is going to be within an inch or two. The Association is buses. as they say, the eye in the sky, it don't lie, so we'll take our camera from up on top. They'll stretch the chains, they'll put it down, and the T-Shapers get some light. Well, it's first down for Texas. Brett Akers conferring with uh, his son, of course, but Brett Stafford, the regular quarterback. Stafford is so much more poised and confident right now than he was the early part of the season. It's not even funny. Far more instinctive the way he's running the ball club. Stafford rolls right. His intended receiver is Hayes, and it's underthrown. Incomplete. It'll be a second down. Brooks was in the vicinity, but once again, it mainly was just a misconnection. Good pattern, though, run by Hayes. He runs the post, and he breaks it back out to the sideline. Hayes, a two-year letterman senior out of San Antonio South Sand, came here as a walk-on. Second down and ten. Stafford again looking for the signs from the sideline. He has got Hayes in motion now. Single running back. Three receivers in the pattern. Hayes runs in the same general vicinity and the pass is incomplete. Now that's interesting, Barry, because actually Hayes might have had a better shot at that ball than uh, McCray, who actually tried to take it. He had two, yeah. two receivers in the pattern. Hayes was about five yards behind him. McCray had to jump to get to it, and Hayes had the defender behind him. I don't know if you can see it on this he shot. He had gotten the win. That good block there. The lower part of your screen by Newton on Little, and by Hunter on Littles. And Philanna Newton goes over the top, wrestles him down. There you saw Hayes. Hayes actually was more open, but he was a little bit further back. Well, again, McCray down for a moment. When land on your head, it will shake you up a bit. And that's an interesting proposition because William Harris has had the swelling in his right hand. They feared he broke it last week. We'll see if they put Harris in for a player or go with another wideout. Well, I thought oh. there for a minute he was heading for the huddle, and if he was, he was going without his helmet, and that would have been a clue to me that he should go out of the game. Brad Lucky, the <laughs> sophomore tight end from uh, Garland, 6-4, in the ball game. Third down at 10, a ball on the 39. Stafford's going to swing it back out to Hunter. He's got a wide open left sideline. Cuts inside of the 30, the 25, the 20. What a beast of running by Hunter as he's run down at about the 16. It's the first down. Tony Brooks finally got to him. Fred Akers told me he's not had anyone to compare him to in years of this type of a runner with a slashing ability. A very heady runner. Watch the block here by Chilton. He leads out. They set the screen up. Now, now they'll come back here. Chilton will swing his man around. Clear out the side. Now it's off to the races. Great move there in acceleration. Makes him miss once and twice, and Brooks brings him down. 25-yard pickup on that little short pass play. Hunter now comes out for a rest. Stafford, 78 yards on five completions. Edwin Simmons is into the lineup. Lined up at the tailback spot. He'll take the ball on the first carry, and he mirrors. He fumbles the football, and it's picked up by TCU. I know, Texas touchdown. TCU had the ball in its grasp and picked up in the end zone. 
by Mr. Russell yeah. Hayes. Right. Your man Hayes, who you've been calling for in a couple of pass patterns, comes up big. Edwin Simmons has got the rap of being a fumbler. He runs up high. They hit him, the ball pops out, and the opportunistic Russell Hayes comes up with a touchdown. Now look, when you see this, Barry, TCU had this football. No question they did. Good pop there by Philander Newton. Right there. And it popped right away. And Hayes recovers for the touchdown. Here's Ward's extra point. He got it. You know, Wacker could put together a highlight film of screwy things that went wrong during my 1985 TCU Horn Frog campaign. And that one's got to go there. Almost like the Metcalf situation where January pushed uh, the TCU defender out of the way uh, who was going for the touchdown. Last week, three deflections out of their hands. Simmons there, awfully strong, just runs through and protected the ball well. That was the funny part about it. Normally, Edwin has had problems getting the hand off, but that was not the case. He just uh, ran right up the gut, had a great run going, and Philanna Newton puts on a major league pop. Watch number 35 come up here and jar Simmons. And Simmons weighs 235 pounds, breaks arm tackle after arm tackle, and a huge knock by number 35, Philanna Newton. TCU's Lewis uh, defensive tackle really just about had that football but couldn't hold on so it all results in a touchdown to Hayes and now it's a 10 to nothing Texas lead with 506 remaining in the first half that down that drive started on the Texas 26 yard line the key play when they took it up on a fourth and inches all right we're set for the kickoff that went 10 plays 74 yards Four minutes and 27 seconds. Hayes recovering the Simmons fumble after a 15-yard run, which he will be credited with. And a kickoff is coming down. Taken on about the three-yard line by Stanley Petrie. Petrie fights his way up to about the 20, and that's where TCU will put the ball in play. Right, very important right here that TCU takes good care of the football. The second quarter has always been a disaster type quarter for the Horn Frogs. Wacker's trying to tell David Rasko, look, son, protect the football. Personally, I would like to see their passing game do something more than rolling to the right, suckering Texas in and throwing up. If they do it one more time, Ty Allen's not going to fall down. He's going to intercept one. You talk about disaster quarter, to say the least. The Horn Frogs have been outscored 120 to 21 in the second quarters this year. As Jeffrey takes the handoff and gets about four, Rocky Go Reed, the Two. senior lineman making the stop. What you don't want to do right now, Greg, with 450 and change counting down, have a one, two, three situation, kick the ball, give Texas good field position, and then let him go in for another score. If you go in a 10 zip, Wacker says, hey, we got him right when we want him. We're the underdog. We're supposed to be down. We're playing excellent smash mouth football. Second down and seven. Rasko cannot elude all of the rush. Ty Allard, the outstanding linebacker. You want to know why I say this kid is the Jack Cam well, of semi-pro football? Well, that was his 10th quarterback sack this year, which leads Texas. Just tremendous speed and quickness. He is so hard to block. One, because he's so fast. The number two, great hand strength keeps people off his body. The irony of it is dad was a great football player at Southwest Texas, was an assistant coach. Had his knees all torn up, and he's uh, the athletic director in the Spring Branch school system. Third down and ten. Rasko, a little swing pass. Out it comes to Davis, and boy, he doesn't swing very far, does he? Boom! Chris Dulabin, linebacker. Well, we talked about the adjustments that the Texas defense makes. They made one right there as we have an injury. Is that WC next down? It may be. 69, yes. That is WC next. Boy, he's a very valuable yeah. player. He's the heart and soul of their offensive line. They could ill afford to lose him. They've been playing uh, uh, Simeon at the center spot, moving Nick's over. By the way, speaking of injuries, we have an injury report on McCray who went down earlier. They're checking his collarbone and shoulder. That's the vicinity of where he was hurt. Nick's may have just uh, 
Well, I, I don't know. Still available Had the wind knocked out, perhaps. We got a lot coming up on Home Sports Entertainment. Of course, upcoming NBA basketball telecast. Live NBA action uh, next week on HSC. The Dallas Fort Worth viewers will see the Mavericks Tuesday versus the Phoenix Suns. Friday versus the Indiana Pacers. That's Wayman Tisdale. Houston viewers will see the Rockets Wednesday versus the Indiana Pacers and Wayman Tisdale. Of course, the Rockets live from the summit. The Mavericks live from Reunion Arena. Each game at 7:30. Preceded at 7 o'clock by Sports Talk exclusively on HSC. And of course, don't forget Sports Talk is seen in both markets, whether or not the particular basketball game is able to uh, go into that market or not. So Sports Talk will be on prior to all of those dates. And the games, of course, are restricted to their particular markets or 75-mile radius thereof. The NBA rules. The now, let's see, it's our second stretcher of the day. The yeah, it's an interesting contraption they have because, as you can see on our, on our screen right now, they're able to strap the legs in. So there's absolutely no mobility at all, and nothing can come loose. Well, I want to be sure when they take him in, I would imagine there have been injuries in the past where <laughs> three guys trying to court the guy off the field have uh, aggravated it greatly. And this, of course, uh, immobilizes WC Nicks the third. There you see the, the stats on the game. 10 nothing Texas with 3.32 to go in the first half of play. It's a fourth down. Becker will be in the punt. Metcalf back. Uh, he'll get it about the 43-yard line or so. Well, maybe not. He has to come up and pick it up. There's a flag down, a second flag down. And they got Brockman for roughing the kicker, I believe, back here. But unfortunately, back on the other end, we may have a clip. Let us see. Two flags down in the area. You see them both on the screen and one way back on the eight-yard line. Metcalf again had trouble handling it. Jim Wacker is going to help officiate. No, he just wants to talk to one of his players. And again, the officials have a comp. There it is. Dropping the kicker. And a second penalty was also uh, against... Uh, well, wait a minute. Here we go. Now, you got to protect that kicker. Wacker's trying to get the explanation right now. He might have called one, two, two-step kick, and they run into the kicker. No question about that. No fake job at all. I'm just concerned why, I'm just a little puzzled why Jim Wacker is uh, as upset on the far side as he seemed to be. See, Wacker, Wacker's probably saying this there is the Emerson foul, roughing the kicker, defense, violation of the two-yard zone off. And that's why <laughs> they offset. They got down uh, too close to the receiver, Metcalf. And so Metcalf will get to return another one. Takes it at the 40. The 50, the 45, down to the 40 in TCU territory. Metcalf showing the shiftiness that is in the jeans. David Spradlin making the tackle. In his spotter, Terry still holds the NFL single season combined uh, rushing, receiving, and uh, pass uh, reception yardage. This kid, we're not trying to put the kiss to death, will be an All-American football player by the time he leaves the 40 acres. So you'll see Texas put the ball in play, already leading 10 to nothing with three minutes and six seconds to go in the first half. At halftime, we'll have a conversation with Charles Hunter, the outstanding young tailback with uh, Texas. We'll also see the UT band review the first half and get you all set for second half of play. There's the, the big guy, Edwin Simmons, as he goes off the right side, down inside the 35 to about the 33, pick up of maybe seven. Scott Harris, who was a lightly regarded uh, and lightly recruited player out of Carrollton, made the stop. Moved into a starting linebacker spot for TCU. Ball spotted on the 34. The thing about Edwin Simmons, he's got the speed and the body lean of an Eric Dickerson. And he's got the strength of an Earl Campbell. 
And it was a flag thrown finally on the TCU bench. That looks like it's on Wacker for uh, being a bit too vociferous. But, but last week, the University of Houston defensive players are just talking to themselves the way Simmons came right up and made collision after collision. Dead ball. Unsportsmanlike conduct. Defense. All right, first down for Texas. The ball finally is uh, put down inside the 20 at the 19. Be interesting to see if Wacker runs at 5-2. We'll blitz somebody at all. Jim's still trying to get an explanation. I still think he's upset about the punt call, Greg. Yep, I Not think he, he has to be because his guys uh, got blocked. And then, of course, the... Uh, Getting too close to the receiver. Getting closer than two yards away. That's such a tough judgment call anyway. I want to, I want to see how Jim explains this on his, on his coaches show Monday night. <laughs> He's not inviting Dixon Holman to come over and uh, and have uh, biscuits and grits tomorrow morning after church. Now he charged the timeout to TCU because it took so long. I mean, he's got his Horned Frog football team that's up in arms over in the seventh. He is fighting for his guys. He says, hey, it's no fun going 0-6, going through what we've gone through. Give us a break. Well, first down of all of the 19. Texas crowd so loud now. I don't know if Stafford's going to be able to hear himself. Oh, he does. The handoff goes inside to the big guy again, Simmons. And Simmons fights forward. He's got tremendous power as he picks up about five. Well, he should. He's 6'4", 234. That's a power runner. Lewis and Spradlin on the tackle. Fred Aker says the fact that he came back and played football is the biggest turnaround he's ever seen in his coaching career physically. And those stats are very deceiving. This guy was just given, they, they threw him in the junk pile, said he'd never play again. But he worked and worked and worked to get himself back. Second down and five. Again, Simmons. Short of the first down, it'll be a third down. He picked up only a couple that time. Kent Tremel, the nose guard, led the charge defensively. And it will be a third and about two. Floyd Terrell also went on that play. Floyd out of Victoria. Great spot to me to go play action pass and put that ball in the end zone. the 12 yard line. Third down. We have a report that McCray has a bruised shoulder. He may return to the game. McCray, the uh, Texas tight end. Third and three. A keep by Stafford, and he's going to be short of the first down, but it's fourth and, again, another one of those no-problem calls on fourth down at about a yard. Stopped by the center of the defensive unit. Stafford wants a timeout with exactly one minute, now 59 seconds remaining. Still thought, Greg, that was a great spot for play action with a big... With a big kid, number 33, Simmons in the backfield. Everybody's looking for the run. You can take that ball and go up on top. Fred Akers, who simply does not get enough credit for the tremendous job he's done. All he did was walk in and fill the shoes of one of the real legends in college football in Daryl Royal. He is going for his 90th win overall and 80th at Texas today. 47 years old, Arkansas is where he, of course, uh, played his football, was a student assistant at Arkansas, was an assistant at uh, Port Arthur uh, High School, Jefferson was the head coach at Edinburgh High, and also in Lubbock, nine-year assistant with Texas, two-year head coach at Wyoming, and now is in his ninth year at Texas, so he has uh, certainly been uh, part of this program. Under Joe Royal, part of a couple of national championship teams as an assistant coach. Helped develop the wishbone with Daryl Royal. And I'll tell you, he's a really funny guy, an intense competitor. You should see him when he's away from the TV cameras and he's got to worry about the, the university image. A very fierce competitor, a man who wants to win, and a guy with an excellent sense of humor. 
They're running. They got 10 seconds left on the uh, play clock, and uh, they're going to have to hustle to get this play off on fourth down. They'll make it though. Three, two. They got it. Simmons first down, and he spun down, but the ball knocked loose. And was it the ball? Yes, he was down before the ball came loose. Now I said first down. That's going to be very close, actually. The knee touched just at about uh, a little bit before the uh, marker, and of course, depending on where the ball was being carried, we'll see how it's spotted. Caution to the wind with a big body of the kid from Hawkins, Texas. Simmons goes airborne here. Well, almost looked like PKI kick, PK kick karate the way he came down with his left foot. First down as he just made it. Rick Rusley was the man who made the hit. First and goal for Texas. The clock running with 40 seconds. So this will be an interesting uh, setup here. They got time, of course. They're going to be inside 30 when they get the play away. Simmons to the 5, 4, 3, and he stopped there with 22 seconds and the clock running. You can see the incredible strength of Edwin Simmons. Garland Whittle is a strong kid. The cornerback comes up and makes the force, and he just... Uh, Went along for the ride like a day at the rodeo. Timeout with 19 seconds left for Texas. I think you saw it. I didn't catch the number of checking the scoreboard, but you saw how violent the game can be. One of the uh, TCU players had a whole bunch of blood on the back of his shirt. <laughs> now Texas with 19 seconds left, leading 10 to nothing in the first half. Has the ball on the three. Simmons, six rushes, 35 yards so far. He has only played in the second quarter. Again, Edwin Simmons pointing to the Baylor and AM games. Getting this kid's confidence back, Greg, was a real big thing for the coaching staff. As I said, they kind of threw him on the physically unable to perform junk pile until he made a dramatic comeback. Three leg operations and a right leg shorter than the left. Simmons, he's got to go wide. They've got that one diagnosed. The clock yep. is running. Spradlin again. Spradlin has been the star defensive player. Hey. It's still ticking, and we're waiting for the moment. Are they out of timeouts? They apparently are, because they're not going to be able to stop the clock. That's it. Well, there's a flag thrown, but I think it was an illegal procedure, and it didn't really matter, because I believe it was against the Texas team. Let's wait and see here. Texas had run out of timeouts they could not call one and they had no time to get that play off the key was the TCU defense and you see some exuberantly happy players leaving the field right now TCU you'd think uh, had just uh, taken about a 10 point halftime lead because they are fired up I said if they went in only down 10 up that's a moral victory for them especially when they're so close to their goal line down there and they come up with zip the t Super fans booing right now at Texas for improper utilization of the clock. They did not look like a, a team wanting to go to the Cotton Bowl by not being able to get those plays off. Well, it's halftime. The Longhorns lead the Horned Frogs 10 to nothing. And when our halftime continues, we'll be chatting with Charles Hunter, the outstanding running back for the Longhorns. And we'll also take a look at the fan. You stay with us. It's all coming up next on Home Sports Entertainment. If high window sticker prices are keeping you out of new car showrooms, then come to Gullo Haas Toyota for the finest selection of dependable used cars. Because Gullo Haas offers the widest selection of quality used cars and trucks in the area. Foreign or domestic cars, trucks, or vans. We've got the models, styles, and variety to fit your price range. Clean, affordable, and reliable used cars and trucks, and we can arrange financing to fit your budget. So come by and drive one for yourself at Gullo Haas Toyota. I-45 North Exit Gulf Bank, either way. The Southwest Conference is more than just football and basketball, and HSE makes sure that you see it all. We're on the track following some of the nation's finest athletes. We're at the pools with Olympic gold medalists at the Southwest Conference Championships. We're on the court following the tennis stars of tomorrow battling for their schools today. If you're looking for the best in Southwest Conference sports, there's only one place you'll find it all. Home Sports Entertainment.
Coach Greg Lucas back at halftime. We have an opportunity prior to the game to chat with uh, Charles Hunter, the outstanding running back of the University of Texas Longhorns. And Charles, we got to talk to you for one thing because you had such an outstanding week last week with 187 yards. Uh, how soon was it that you knew that you'd set a new freshman rushing record at UT after that game? Well, I really hadn't realized it until now when you told me. Uh, it was a good feeling, you know, the offensive line done a great job blocking and, you know, it was a lot of openings for the running backs and we were able to get in them and hang out some water. You've had a good year all around. You're averaging about five yards a carry uh, and any running back who can average five a carry is having a good year. What's the secret, Ben? Well, just uh, following the blocking. The offensive line is doing a great job blocking and, you know, I'm just uh, trying to do the best I can. You're at the point of the season now where every game is maybe doubly important. This game against TCU, very important because you got Cotton Bowl on your mind, uh, even though you've got some big ones left. Well, right now, uh, we're, we're only thinking about TCU, and we're not thinking about the Cotton Bowl. Uh, you know, it's, it'll be nice if we can make it to the Cotton Bowl, but right now we're just thinking about, you know, really, you know, going out and uh, competing today against TCU. Charles, all athletes say that. You mean to say you have not thought about the Cotton Bowl at all? Not once, ever? Well, we've thought about it, but we try to uh, kind of keep things like that off our mind and just take one thing at a time. Your team has great depth at running back, uh, Metcalf, and, of course, uh, healthy Simmons. Uh, at the right time, everyone seems to be coming together. Yes, uh, everyone's getting healthy. You know, the offensive uh, unit is improving week after week, and, you know, the uh, abundance of talent, that's an asset for the Longhorns. Well, here's a guy that's got a lot of it, a, a red shirt, uh, technically sophomore as far as year in school. Three more years at UT. Southwest Conference is going to be hearing about Mr. Hunter a lot more. Thanks for taking time to be with us. All right, thank you. We're going to continue with the taking a look at the band uh, down on the field as halftime continues, so you stay with us. It's all coming up right here on Home Sports Entertainment. HSE's fall sports season starts with college football featuring the Southwest Conference and rushes into the NBA season with the rim-rattling twin towers of the Houston Rockets, Akeem Olajuwon and Ralph Sampson. And their Midwest Division rivals, the Dallas Mavericks, featuring the acrobatic smooth-scoring tandem of All-Stars Rolando Blackman and Mark Aguirre. Later in the fall, hard-hitting New Jersey Devils NHL hockey returns. And the kicks continue with the exciting Dallas Sidekicks and the fast-paced Major Indoor Soccer League. For the best bets in Southwest sports, it's home sports entertainment. HSE, a new tradition in sports. 10-0 halftime score. Longhorns lead the Horn Frogs. Just about set to get the second half underway. Longhorns, of course, uh, scored first, and they've been the only team to score. Although Texas uh, Christian doesn't look too bad statistically, as you can see. They're just about 30-some yards, almost 30 yards behind in total yards. They just don't have any points. As the kickoff gets the second half underway, Edwin Simmons is back, but he's not going to return it as uh, they put the ball in play, they'll bring it out to 20. Some of the highlights of the first half, of course, it all started Barry Warner, uh, the scoring on a big field goal. Far between a 48-yarder from Jeff Ford, who closes in on Russell Erksweben's record, and the highlight for TCU. Jared Daly on the receiving end of this, the freshman from Madison High School. Rascal back, sprints out, rolls to the right, lets it go. Feeding double coverage is Jared Daly. A couple of plays later, Jeffries fumbled, and Texas was back in business. And here's the play that uh, resulted in that play. Edwin Simmons, great hit by Flanna Newton. Ball pops loose, and the opportunistic Russell Hayes falls on it for the Texas touchdown. Back to live action, first and 10 from the 20. And you're up to date as Hunter takes uh, the first carry, and it's a uh, pick up about three yards. Kent Trammell making the stop as we get the second half underway. What's flatter? Pancakes for breakfast, the Texas Westchester Desert, or the University of Texas offensive effort in the first half? Make your pick. Fred Akers had to be less Ask than pleased Fred. at the half. That's Fred. Second down and six. Two men in the backfield look like uh, 
little mix up on what the count was. There's a little float pass. That's incomplete. That was intended for Hayes. The man who scored the touchdown on the fumble recovery. Yeah, yeah, keep going for Hayes, but I keep talking about Everett Gay over here. The kid with a 37-inch jump, vertical jump uh, from Houston's Wheatley High School. Donovan Pitts suited up, not going to play. Fred Akers trying to rest his leg for the next two ball games. But this kid has got great speed. Third down, six. Ball still at the 24-yard line. Hayes cuts inside. Now he's a receiver. Is uh, Stafford scrambling to find one, and no one there. McCray, who did come back into the game, was the intended receiver there, but he couldn't get to it. It's going to be fourth down. That TCU defense, which uh, ended on a high note, as Texas was out of timeouts at the closing seconds, they had a ball on the three-yard line, couldn't score. They'll get the football back. John Telchik is in the front. Jim Wacker. 56-yard average for Telchik. He had one of the first half. It was 78. You know, Telchik's interesting. The first time he set foot on this field wasn't as a football player. He was in the band. His dad is the band director at Kerrville. As he gets out a low kick, it takes a good Texas pound. Yeah, the roll will help the average because it wasn't that particularly good kick. Goes down to the 30-yard line where TCU will have the football for the first time in the second half. On their own 30, first and 10. We're not going to see any razzle. We didn't see it in the first half, and I don't expect to see any razzle-dazzle at all. Any flea flickers, any reverses, any halfback options for Jim Wacker's ball club. With a young team like that, when you take chances and you're going bad, they always have a tendency to backfire and miss Q on you. David Rasco is the quarterback. He's been in there the whole way. The red-shirted freshman out of Houston, Westchester. Well, I mentioned something about the red-shirt situation. Texas players are listed by their academic year and not by their football year. Consequently, there is no such thing as a freshman red-shirt on the Texas roster. The player who was red-shirted last year is still listed as a sophomore. And uh, that is not the case at TCU. TCU and most other schools, that's a Fred Akers preference. He just uh, prefers to list them as their year in school. I guess they're all going to catch up to you in the end anyway. You can be a senior twice, somewhere along the line. And then inside to Jeffries. Jeffries got past the initial uh, defensive charge, but not the secondary units as Tony Tillman comes up to make the stop. David Little, son of the University of Texas Associate Athletic Director Bill Little, our spotter going right down and pointing out Tillman, but the play was really made by Richard Peavy, who came up on the force, and that left it easy pickings for number 11, Tillman. Tillman will get credited with the tackle, but Peavy uh, will get some stars in the coach's film evaluation. Jeffrey has to take the high pitch. And he's scrambling to make something out of almost nothing. He gained a couple of yards. Richard Peavy that time did make the tackle. The way that McKinney strung that play out and almost forced the fumble. Could have been an easy six for Texas, but Jeffrey has got those Eric Dickerson, John Jefferson, fat goggles maintained his cool there. Allard putting pressure. Breaks the tackle right there. See, he changes his hands and wants to make sure that ball is towards the sideline in case he fumbled it would go out of bounds. They're down at five. Rasco going deep. Incomplete. That ball was intended for Jared Delaney, but it was overthrown a little bit. Tony Tillman was there on the coverage, and so we will have to exchange punts as the wave uh, comes to Memorial Stadium. One thing I don't like about the TCU passing attack, when they've been going cross field, but number two, they're running one-man patterns. they got to get a multiple pattern and give the quarterback an option of somebody underneath. Becker has to short hop the snap, gets a good kick away. Metcalf takes it, going to turn on some speed. No, the Horn Frogs won't let him turn on any speed on the far side. That looked like uh, number 49 uh, for TCU. Uh, Got to have him fed it on that one. Pitts. We made the stop. Pitts uh, grabbed on to Metcalf. Didn't let him get out. 10 to nothing is the score as uh, the second possession of the second half for Texas. First half, Texas possessed the ball 18 minutes. So TCU's just under 12. Penalties, TCU 5 for 63 yards. Texas 4 for 29. Uh, maybe a key in the game. We won't know till the old ball game is over, but might be when Texas couldn't get any points on the board when they had the ball down inside yeah. and the clock ran out on them. No question at all. That was very poor execution of the clock. Not coming up with at least three points. 
and I'm sure Fred Aker spoke to his squad about that as Gay comes out foot to the near side. Well, they kind of had all their eggs in that one carry by Simmons, and when he lost yardage, they, they didn't have time to get lined up and throw an incomplete pass. Here's a real left. Stafford strung out, throws it back across the green. Wisely, well, maybe not wisely dropped. He would have gained about three yards. If, uh, if Hunter could have held on to that ball, he would have gained about three, but he wasn't going to gain much. Second down. That ball was strung out. Stafford was looking, and Hunter, of course, came back to help out, as all receivers and offensive players are supposed well, to do. One of the big things that's happened to Brett Stafford is the fact that not only is he more comfortable, he's avoiding making the bad plays. He does not look pretty. He's not a style, pretty boy type quarterback. He just wants to get the job done. Well, he's done the job since he has been in as a starter. Hayes in motion to the left. Stafford rolls left. The press rush is on, and bang, down he goes. Oh, my, an outstanding play by Garland Littles, the Quero a sophomore. He was in on that play all the way. He's the rover back, six feet, 200 pounds. And being the rover back, he can do just as the name implies, pretty much play anywhere on the field. Well, what he does is he just slides and doesn't have to worry about pass coverage at all. Again, pressure by Spadlin. And a great individual effort by the sophomore, Garland Littles. But we have... Uh, the quarterback Stafford having to come off the field he apparently has injured his arm and he's being helped uh, or shoulder arm or shoulder the way they're holding up maybe it's the shoulder yeah. he looks like it's the shoulder and the kid is an obvious pain boy that that really is a serious injury for a quarterback that's the right arm and he's trying to hold it immobile maybe the wrist Todd Dodge from the Golden Triangle area into the ball game. Well, Todd, three-year letterman senior, Third has down. not been the fans' favorite here over the last year or so, but they better like him because they're going to get him for the rest of this one, it looks like. And there's a big power run by Jerome Johnson, the Jerome senior uh, fullback. Kevin Psycho Dean making the stop. And the next quarterback we'll see warming up on the sideline will be Shannon Kelly. The kid from Houston's Memorial High School. He's dressed into the role right now of the backup. That's well, fourth down, and so uh, Texas will have to kick it away. Tony Brooks, number As we're all set for a Telchik punt. Again, Telchik, a three-step kicker. Brooks back deep. He gets it away. No contact. Brooks will take it on about the 37-yard line, run out of bounds at the 39. That's where TCU will put the ball in play. We'll take a break. We've got 11 minutes, 11 seconds to go in the third quarter. Texas 10, TCU nothing on Home Sports Entertainment. It's times like those that I'd rather be sitting here reading the sporting news. Traveling around the league and reading the sporting news keeps me up to the minute on pro football. But I really count on the sporting news to keep me posted on all the other major sports. My schedule really keeps me busy, so when I want to get all the latest scores and stats, the stories on baseball, basketball, hockey, boxing, and more, reported on the scene by 40 feature writers, I go to the one sports source America has counted on for 100 years, the sporting news. If you subscribe now, you'll get the special 100th anniversary issue of the sporting news, and you can also take advantage of this special half-price offer. Here's how. Call toll-free 1-800-253-1000. You'll get 30 weekly issues of the Sporting News for less than 50 cents an issue, a savings of one-half off the regular subscription rate. You can pay in three easy installments of only $4.96 each. Call 1-800-253-1000. That's 1-800-253-1000. All right, it's uh, Texas Christians football. The ball spotted on the 39-yard line. They'll have first and 10. We'll uh, perhaps get a word uh, from the uh, locker room on Stafford, uh, first opportunity. You can see it was a shoulder or arm injury of some type. First and 10. TCU certainly not out of the football game by any stretch of the imagination. They have not scored many points this year, but they're only 10 down. And they haven't turned the ball over, the exception of the one Jeffrey fumble. They've done a good job of protecting the football. Jeffrey protects it across the 40-yard line for a two-yard game. Brian Espinoza and Blake Brauner on the stop. Rocky Reed, number 98, on the stop. Rocky Reed, 
jumped in there late as you heard the public address announcer out here in the back on second down and nine it's a short nine there's the man I think you're talking about warming no that's not Chan that's, that's Todd Dodge, Dodge trying to lumber yeah he just getting loose he just was thrown in there at the uh, moment's notice nowhere to be seen was a receiver on that play Texas plays man and what I'd like to see TCU do a run more multiple patterns. It appears that they're running just a one-man fly pattern. Nothing underneath, nothing to occupy a safety and drag them out there. That ball, however, was thrown in such a location that you gotta figure either number one, there was supposed to be a second receiver, or number two, Jared Delaney, the only receiver was supposed to cut to the center of the field. One of the neat stories, number four flanked out to the top of the side, the senior walk on the undersized Sean Millsap. Now a flanker. He's got a lot of speed. And he's going to go down the streak on the left side. And that might have been offensive pass interference. They didn't call they didn't it. call it. But you saw that receiver inside there, Je uh, Jeffrey. He looked like he was pushing the defensive player out of the way. It's a fourth down. But at least there, they ran a multiple pass pattern. For the first time, we see more than one white jersey out in the pass pattern. That happened to be the short man. Superbly covered. And you see his back there, Ty Allard. The pass uh, off or the push off was before we saw that shot. Eric Metcalf. Two men hit him with a vengeance. We'll pick up the numbers. Got to give uh, Dickinson a little bit of credit on that one. Chuck Dickinson. Well, it'll be first down for Texas. Both teams trading punts. I got a prediction. Todd Dodge hits a couple of passes. All of a sudden, all these geniuses that build them will be cheering because right now, he is the main man. We have no idea how long Brett Stafford's going to be out for. He may be finished. And I'm not trying to play doctor, but I'm saying maybe. So right now, the often booth, Todd Dodge, the man of the hour for the Texas offense. An offense that has been far from productive this afternoon. First down. 10 to go. Well, as Charles Hunter told us, and as Fred Akers told you, they are not looking past any individual game, and that may be true, but at the same time, they aren't exactly playing as well as they perhaps can in this one, and that's not to take anything away from TCU, but TCU certainly is fired up and is doing a fine job. Derek Metcalf. Boy, the crowd, the electricity when Metcalf uh, gets the football is certainly in the air. He picks up just about all ten. You know, Ron Franklin is the conference play-by-play. -play. That's his favorite Texas football player. You know why? Where's number two on his back? The channel two. I had to throw that in for RF. This kid is going to be an All-American football player by the time it's all sent. And he came to Texas for two reasons. Academics and the fact that he could run track. He's a great relay and long jumper. 12-yard gain. He'll try another one. Boom! Down he goes. That was uh, number 97, Kevin Psycho Dean. Psycho was psyched on that one. He uh, was a defensive end, very animated type player. As you can see, after he makes a good play, he lets you know it. I don't think his elevator goes all the way up to the top. Well, some say that to play defense, it shouldn't. Second down and 12. So Metcalf gained 12, lost two, and it's second and 12. 9-13 to go third quarter, 10-0 Texas. And a timeout will be called a charge to Texas. So Texas now has two remaining. TCU has not taken one yet in this uh, half of play. Friday night, the home sports entertainment cameras will be taking you live to Reunion Arena for a special treat. It is indoor soccer featuring the Dallas sidekicks. If you haven't caught an indoor soccer game yet on HSC, you're missing some really great high-scoring action. Some say it's the fastest game on two feet. Might be with us at 7.30 Friday night as the Dallas sidekicks play host to the San Diego Soccers live from Reunion Arena. You know, we, we got to put one thing in perspective. Todd Dodge is the backup. He is not exactly chopped liver. I mean, here's a guy who was a highly recruited schoolboy, became the first Texas quarterback in schoolboy history to throw for over 3,000 yards in one season. No, he has had a, he had a tremendous, uh, of course, teaming up with his old Texas teammate, Brett Duhon, at Port Arthur Jefferson. They had quite a combination. There were some surprises when he came here, I guess, because he was a passing quarterback, and at that time, Texas didn't throw the ball much at all. 
and uh, he's had a good career. That would won my admiration the way he handled all the booing early in the year. Second down and 12. Dodges pass is caught by McCray. Oh, an outstanding catch by McCray. He takes it across the 50 to about the 48 yard line. Well, Todd Dodge throws a wound to Duck. That won't make any highlight film. The pass won't. The reception will. A wound to Duck. Rolls right. Gets the protection. He has both backs out there. Plenty of time. Ball bobs and it waves. And here comes the man from Smiley. One, two, I got it. Same kid who got his bell rung in the first quarter. He's okay now. 21 yards on that pass play. First and 10. A ball across midfield. Dodge. The pressure. Got it. Back to about the 42-yard line. Some of the crowd thought that Mitchell Benson dived in a little late. Scott Harris, the man who got him, though, the counted. And that's a big play for Harris because last week in the game, you and Ray Allborn did, he had a sure interception. He bobbled it, and he started to run. He saw a touchdown, saw him being a hero, and he dropped the football. Now he comes up with a big sack. Second down. They keep and 20 something. What Wacker's able to do on this 5 2 defense right now, he's been able to turn his linebackers loose a little bit. He's playing a four man front now, keeping one guy back. Another violation on Texas, and boy, did Mitchell Benson come through on that. He may get a flag thrown on him, however. And that's unfortunate because the penalty was going to be on Texas, and he may have thrown a second one on, uh, on uh, Mitchell. Brian Chester, the right guard, moved. Let's see if it's only going to be one flag or two. To say that Mitchell Benson is exuberant is an understatement. He is their answer to William the Refrigerator Perry. There's no question about that. He had 101 tackles and 29 sacks as a senior in high school. And it was a personal foul on Benson, so they offset. Here you'll see it. A little over-anxious for man number 95. Dodge makes the snaps. It is the move right there by the guard. Whoa! You take that, take that one more time. Four, five, six, or I don't care, I'll fight the whole team. Well, and Dodge was even jumping in there to take on Benson, and that's a little mismatch. Dead ball, false start, offense. We'll now enforce dead ball, personal foul, defense. Lacker, less than pleased in the far sideline. Well, it all adds up to second down and 11. So they actually gained about, oh, golly, about nine yards from where they started out when you add and subtract all the yardage. They give inside and good running room. There's Darren Norris. Norris cuts outside of the 20. 15, he covers the football in the end zone. TCU football, it's a touchback. Oh, the fumbles are hurting Texas. Tony Brooks, the man who fell on that football after a good run by Darren Norris, but it wasn't good enough, was it? You, you could feel somehow, some way, that TCU was going to make something happen. They dropped off their 5-2. They started blitzing the linebacker Harris on that one sec. Here's Morris gets tripped up. He's the kid from California with sprinter speed and a fullback type body. Low base, great strength in his legs. He's got a touchdown, right, wrong, no, 97, Psycho Dean strips him of the ball, and the Horned Frogs, Terrence Brooks, Brooks, who makes the start today, comes up as a hero. Yeah, old Psycho really just slapped right at the ball and knocked it loose. A 48-yard run by Norris. That's one of those, it's almost like what they say, kissing your sister. Big deal, huh? 48 yards and you fumble the football. First down for TCU on their own 20. And that wasn't a question of Texas being lethargic. These guys are playing smash mouth football. They're playing like there's no tomorrow. This is their whole season. They upset Texas, they make their season. Rasco going deep. Nobody there except for a kid picked off by Texas and down by Tony Tillman at about the 42 yard line. That pass was underthrown. Once again, it was really only one receiver on that street pattern on the right side, Keith Burdett. And Tillman picks it off, so that changes the momentum that fast. Bad execution, good theory. You get the ball on a big break from a turnover, strike while the iron is hot. 
Only problem, he didn't throw it deep enough. And once again, so see, in Texas plays such great man-to-man -man coverage. You know, they have the Marcy Cades and they have Johnny Johnson and Jerry Gray and a host of other great defensive backs that this university has turned out. So Texas gets it back. They lose some yardage, but they got the ball back. First down and 10. Metcalf. Oh, look at those feet. He didn't gain much on that. Only a couple of yards, but that was two more than he would have had. Garland Littles uh, brought him down. He just stopped like boom and then moved out to the left. So Metcalf with another carry. Second down and eight. Ball is on the 44-yard line. High formation behind Dodd. McClay. McClay brought down to the 41-yard line. At first down. We were talking to Fred Akers, excuse me, before the game. He said, this kid is not the athlete of a Harris, but he is such a great competitor. He said, he may be as good a competitor as we have in the entire Texas football program. And the kid got his bell rung early in the ball game. He knows that he's not going to give up that PT, but all important plan time. Finds the seam in the zone and makes the catch. And we still haven't seen Everett Gay catch the football. Newton finally made the stop, but again, a first down. Again, Dodge drops back. They can't get to that one. That was a little bit down low in front. Okay, we've got an update on Stafford. He's out for the game, shoulder injury, but they don't know how serious yet. A final score, SMU 9, Texas Tech 7. The second down and 10. Oh, well, that's where you sent our spotter. Yeah, we sent David. That guy has... Well, we sent David Whittle in a check with his dad about the same <laughs> time that our staff man got the information. <laughs> Second down and 10. Great minds running similar patterns. Now we knew we'd hear about it sooner or later. Hayes is wide left. And to give him the delay, Norris cuts back inside. He's short of the first down. He only picked up Norris. about five. Third down and five. Stacked up there by Paul Montgomery, a four-sport high school star out of uh, Brownsboro. Freshman. Scott Harris also, redshirt freshman. In fact, these guys don't have too many college credits uh, behind their name that are playing for TCU. They don't have a lot of guys that shave on TCU. <laughs> They're down and five. Pass rushed, and he gets it away just in time. That ball is caught by McCray, but it is short of the first down. The pass rush caused him to throw it quickly, but really, I think you got to give Dodge some credit because he found that receiver just in time. Uh, they were, it looked like they may have been trying to set up a tight end screen, but the official got in the way. Pass rush made him unload the ball, and of course, that meant the receiver, McCray, could not get far enough for the first down yardage, and so it's fourth down. And Akers is in to hold, and Ward should be in to kick. And he is. And Ward, uh, if he hits this field goal, which will, well, he won't get it up until another timeout. Texas second. They got one left now. And don't laugh right now, folks, but that could be crucial having only one timeout. TCU can, it finds himself in an excellent position to come back and, and make a football game out of this. Get a score here, tie it up with a field goal. Ward, if he hits this field goal, will have tied John Goodson for the single season UT record of 17. Uh, he is, at this moment, six shy of Russell Ertzleben's school mark of 49. You got Ertzleben, you got Allegre, you have Ward. He's got a definite pro future. You know, it's interesting. Jeff missed his first three field goals in the Missouri game. Uh, no, and a new hold, and now they're going to change. Yeah, he, got, he was a little upset, too. See, look on his face. He's upset about that whole coach, thing. Coach, coach, it's a chip shot, man. I kicked five against Arkansas. Well, the win would have been slightly in his face, but the kick uh, and the kick would have been coming from about 50, so probably not a bad change. It's fourth down and a long two. Just about a full three, actually. Don't rule out a fake here. Don't rule out Texas trying to do something to shake them out of the lethargy. 
That's always a big one here. Slippery Rock wins. Cactus Fire has been getting that score out here for years. Seven to six for all those folks that had Slippery Rock and gave the points. Well, it's still fourth down, and we still haven't gotten the playoff yet. 5.46 to go, and they did call a, uh, well, delay a game penalty. That's just going to give you more room to punt. If he's punting, it doesn't really make any difference. In fact, it's better. Go fourth down. Well, except it takes away your chance more than likely for a fake. TCU gets the break when they get the fumble in the end zone. They give the ball right back, but Lasko's first turnover does not come back to haunt them. Quite a disparity from last week when his first three turnovers on the interception all cost him touchdowns. Celtic's punt straight up in the air. He's aiming for the corner on the far side, and he is going to come about as close as you can get inside the 10 at about the eight. So TCU with four field position but does have the football. They trail by 10 to nothing. Five minutes and 34 seconds to go in the third quarter. Greg Lucas here along with Barry Warner. There's Jim Wacker and David Rasko. Greg, this to me has got to be the key series for the, uh, the second year freshman from Houston's Westchester High School, David Rasko. They got to get some points on the board. You don't want to go into the fourth quarter with the big goose egg. Got five and a half minutes before the end of the quarter. I'd like to see him put the ball up in the air more. He was a little underthrown on that ball that was intercepted. But again, if he runs multiple patterns, he may have a shot at getting something with a man underneath, trying to clear out a clear out part of the field. Ten nothing, Texas. There you saw the score. Now TCU with the football. Rasco with his uh, Davis Jeffrey tandem backfield behind him gives the ball to Jeffrey he's stacked up right about the line of scrimmage at the 10. Jeffrey's not been able to break much of anything Thomas Aldridge coming in to uh, make the stop Thomas a backup right end behind Blake Bronner you know like TCU I said not breaking anything the longest run really for Jeffrey this year is 26 and there's the total rushing yards And there's a semi-break by Bobby Davis, but uh, only actually about a five-yard gain. Davis has had some running room. Richard Peavy on the stop. Davis broke one for 50 yards against Rice. He may have fallen on the football. He'll be all right, I think. You know what, what's interesting about the Texas Longhorn defense? There's always been a tradition of Texas having great tackles. I mean, from the old days when Darrell Royal coached them and they had... Uh, in the 70s with the McMichaels and the Brad Shear and Doug English, uh, Kenneth Sims, uh, Tony DeGate last year. No great studs in the middle this year. Just a couple of workman-like guys. They got Llewellyn, that steel hammer, who's been injured, uh, the Adams kid, Espinoza, and they've really done a marvelous job. See how that left arm flapped out there? I think that's what he heard. I said he had the wind knocked out of him. He may have... Uh, same old thing. Could be a shoulder. In any event, Davis comes out, and I believe Bradford uh, came in. There's a pass. Rasko knocked up in the air, incomplete. That was intended out of the flat to Jared Delaney, but Mike January got a hand on it and knocked it down. January's a good all-around athlete as far as football goes. He was a running back in high school, a top one, and a tight end as a sophomore and junior. Hands but, up. Know. It's a drill they always practice. So important, though. Man's got his hands up and the flex the pass. Becker will punt on fourth down. Metcalf's going to have to run a little bit to get to that one. In fact, he won't get to it. And it is taken out of bounds uh, on the far side at about the 47 with their flags. Yeah, it looks like uh, Big Ed Cunningham and Becker got into it a little bit. See if there is a call. Personal foul, the preliminary call, and it is called against Texas. That's the preliminary call. Same old thing, uh, it's when it took place as to whether or not it was on the punt or a dead ball. We'll see. Fred Akers just uh, staring a little bit of disbelief on that particular call. It looked basically like incidental contact was made. 10 to nothing to score. Texas on top. They scored a 48-yard field goal and a fumble recovery in the end zone. A, one of their own fumbles, that we might add. They was recovered in the end zone. That all in the first half. 
And football's coming back, so it will be to TCU's benefit. Jim Wacker with a coach's clipboard with a series of plays, the numbers. Wacker, Bob DeBessie as quarterback coach, a number of others. Kind of like a homecoming for them because uh, 30 miles down the road, they were the three-time NAIA small college champions. Let's see. Four, it was four times altogether. Two times NAIA. Yeah, two three, times, yeah, two two times uh, uh, NCAA Division II. They were all both right down the road. Yeah, he's had tremendous success. That's why uh, you know the program will bounce back. Give inside for Big Yannick. That's uh, Mark Tips, his first carry of the game as he brings the ball all the way up to midfield, a pickup of almost 20 yards. The element of surprise, Tips is family a blocker. He's not noted as any kind of a runner. And all of a sudden, he first threw a good blocking up front. A little stutter step, but he just bounces to the outside, breaks one tackle. And finally, uh, they make the play for the backside as Aldrich, the defensive end spot, makes the tackle. That was a 19-yard gain as the give inside is good for only a couple more. That was Tips again. Tips' longest run of the year up to that one was only six yards. Mike January on the stop push. Now Tips is playing because of the injury to Bobby Davis. Second down and seven. Coming in with a play is Keith Burnett, number 84. Burnett has yet to catch a pass. What do we have Rasko's completion ratio for today? We'll check that in just a second. Seven down, second down and seven. Rasko's going to try one. It's it is intercepted and dropped. Intercepted and dropped. Eric Jeffries uh, had a chance at it. It was intended for yeah, number 85, Ricky Richie Stone. Stone. He should have caught it. But he didn't. His eyes had to get real big on here. Looks to the right, throws back to the left, and hits him in a bad spot, his hands. <laughs> Terrible spot. Ooh. Texas should have the intercept on that one. Well, he finally dropped it the second time. He had a second chance at it and couldn't hold on. It is third down and seven. Wide receivers on both sides. Kid goes inside to Jeffries, and he's very close to the first down, but appears to be maybe a tad short. Richard Peavy making the stop. They got to go for it here. There's no question, Greg. You're three and six on the air, zero oh and six in conference play. You're not on the board yet. It's not even a gamble. Not only that, but your defense you know, uh, is There's a refrigerator. Well. They're yep. calling the igloo. They may put him in on this situation. They're going to call timeout. They're going to diagram this one, I think. Rasko comes over to the sideline. Mitchell Benson, who scored from... Actually, his touchdown last week that you may have seen on the tees at the beginning of the show was, was not your little one-yard run. He went in from five yards, and he, he held his balance from... Uh, he was hit and was going down at about the two, and he put a hand down uh, to keep himself from touching down and then went on in. He did a pretty good job on that. You know the secret on that play, don't you? Wacker may have threatened to keep the kid off the training table for the rest of the semester unless he scored. All kidding aside, you got to be a pretty good athlete. Basketball player. You'll notice these, uh, these defensive linemen that uh, do play a little offense like William Perry and Mr. Benson, they don't tape their hands all up like the other linemen do. they got to handle the football. He's a bow-legged kid, too, as we take a look at Bevo. What a life, standing around a football game. Okay, here we go. First down yes, for indeed. Benson. And that, of course, the other thing we got to mention about that play, not only is Benson in there, but they also set up in the blocking formation uh, another beefy guy, number 79, comes in uh, for TCU and, and helps set the block. That's Laswell. It's a first down. Laswell is an offensive tackle, but they set him back. Now it's first and ten. Flash. Well, offside. Tips was the carrier. You know, the thing about those plays, Barry, a lot of people are saying, wow, what a great idea. Why didn't they do this in the past in football? That sort of thing. Well, they've done it before. And it's, it's kind of a phase and a cycle that people go through. There have been running backs that maybe don't weigh 288, but uh, remember Mr. Johnson of Ohio State and the pros for a while? Yeah. He, 
He was a big guy. The difference is... He you never him. missed a meal, Johnson. Well, but the thing is, you judge him differently. He's supposed to be able to do everything a running back is supposed to do. Uh, guys like Perry and guys like Vincent aren't supposed to. They're only supposed to do little things. Sorry that I interrupted the official there. This drive started on the eight-yard line. First and ten on the eight. Of course, uh, the penalty kept things alive when Cunningham messed with the kicker. First and 15. Yeah, the sack is on. That ball's loose, but he was down. He was down. He was down at about the 46-yard line. Mike January has played a fine second half. Was one of the people coming in along with Espinoza off the defensive line. And yeah. uh, we also saw Thomas Aldridge, number 97, on the play. They, they were all contributing to the pressure. and the McKinney the got in there, Ty Allert, the whole host of people. And that didn't, that didn't uh, happen just by accident. David McWilliams, the outstanding defensive coordinator for Fred Acres, picked him to and chose his spot there. Brasco is 5 for 14 for 59 yards. Of course, now you knock off 10 yards on that sack from his net yardage, overthrown. He had a receiver. There was about triple coverage, but Burnett was the only one back. And the ball was overthrown. Lucky he wasn't intercepted. Well, TCU is not done with the exception of that one pass to Davis in the first quarter. They're not faking deep and sending a back out into the vacated area. If you're double and triple teaming, somebody's not home in the middle. And they have not thrown any tight end delays either. You know, we talk about that 5 for 14, which is now 5 for 15, but he, he isn't throwing easy passes, as you point out. He's throwing one receiver and deep. And those are hard to complete. Third down and 25. And yeah, he's going to fake it and keep it and kick it away. That was a good fake into the... Running back Jeffrey, but Brasco wasn't going to pick up 25 more than likely. Peavy and Jeffrey's teaming up on the tackle, and TCU will have to kick it away. Again, though, by the time that the Texas gets their hands on the ball, with the less than a minute to go, TCU has gone three quarters with nothing but a goose egg on the scoreboard. I punt. That cat's going to let it go in, but it isn't going to go in, and TCU downs it inside the 10 at about the seven yard line. Killing that ball was TCU's pips, and it will be first and ten for Texas inside their own ten. They're going to put it on the nine-yard line. Of course, the clock always in Texas' favor whenever you're ahead. The fact that they haven't had much of an offensive uh, uh, show doesn't mean a whole lot. Stafford, now they say bruised shoulder. Right. Well, that's, that's good. They can keep him out for a week or two, but... It probably would not keep him out for the rest of the year. Wouldn't it be amazing, though, if Stafford couldn't play and Texas upsets Baylor and A&M goes to the Cotton Bowl behind the guy they booed here in Austin, Todd Dodge, stranger things have happened. Sure have. And nothing stranger than this game. We prepared ourselves for a blowout. You've got to have that disaster list of things to throw in to keep the telecast going. We haven't used them at all. This game has carried itself. Pitch back to Metcalf. He's looking for a hole. None there. Oh, none there at all. Pinching him in, Gerald uh, Garner Littles and Philanda Newton were able to pinch that one off. They covered their positions and didn't react to any fakes. Philanda Newton's got to be one of the best names in, the, in college football. There's another guy that was a, quite a basketball player. He averaged over 20 points a game in high school. 6'3", 193. So Mitchell Benson, Philanda Newton, they both uh, averaged over 20 in high school and playing football with TCU. Second down and six. Give to the fullback. Short yardage, pick up of maybe three. That was uh, Norris again, the 5'11", 199-pound freshman fullback from California. Ron Lewis making the stop from Copperless Cove. That's near, well, actually it's not far from Waco. It's very close to uh, Fort Hood. I know Fort Hood. That's why I threw that in. I was there once. 20 seconds to go in the first half. They say on that shoulder bruise with Stafford, they don't consider it serious, but he won't play today. Metcalf, first down. As he spun down across the 20-yard line at the 23. Garland Littles again on the stop. As we will reach the end, well, the clock has stopped. I think just to mark the ball. We've probably played our last play of the third quarter. But it definitely helps when you're able to run behind an offensive line like Leon Manley here has. Chilton gets all the pub, but guys like Chester, Jatan, and Stewart will get drafted in the NFL. 
We've reached the end of three, so there's timeout on the field as the teams change position. It is Texas 10, TCU nothing. The fourth quarter coming up right here on Home Sports Entertainment. You and me, we speak the same language. We're in business to make a profit, right? So don't throw it away. Call Sprint. They'll give you a package of services that'll save you money on every kind of long-distance call. Watts lines, private lines, even calls made away from the office. And Sprint volume discounts let you save even more. Look, if you don't want to save money with Sprint, don't tell me about it. Tell your stockholders. Call Sprint. Find out about it. the Mavs at Reunion Arena, only in the Metroplex, on HSE, a new tradition in sports. One more quarter of action left here from Memorial Stadium. It has been gray and cloudy and cold in the 50s all day, but... Uh, not been such a great day for TCU. They trail, but only by 10 to nothing, and certainly are within range. And it's a football team that has not won in the conference this year. All sorts of turmoil. On top of the people that, of course, were dropped from the team, Barry, this team has had injuries left and right. Oh, there's no question. Jim Wacker uh, ended up playing a lot of kids that he thought were going to be human blocking dummies. And now have ended up in being an integral part of his football team. And heck, is one senior on his defensive unit. Texas has the football. Dodge the quarterback. The give uh, again to Metcalf is getting the ball quite frequently here in this uh, fourth quarter, third quarter, fourth quarter now. Pick up of eight up to the 30 yard line. Second down and two. Metcalf's a freshman out of Arlington, Virginia. Very quick feet. We saw that earlier when he stopped on a dive. Longest gain coming into this game was 18 yards against the University of Houston. Second down and two. Going out wide, top of the screen is Russell Hayes. Down at the bottom is Everett Gay. Gay, again, has not been a pass receiver. They don't really have to throw the ball now. They've got a lead as long as they keep running it. Metcalf's going out outside. He cuts oh. the ball. There's going to be the longest run of his college career because that's going to go all the way. Eric Metcalf, touchdown. Okay, this kid is definitely going to establish his own identity. He is not going to be ended up four years from now as the son of Terry Metcalf. He is going to be Eric Metcalf. A great, great move there. He is going to be Eric Metcalf like it was Eric Dickerson. He's got that kind of pedigree. As the kick is down, it's up and good. A great block there by number 34, Norris, that really sprung him loose. He tight ropes the sideline, and he's got that overdrive, that extra gear. Okay, Dodge. Just hands it off. He was going to try to hit the four hole. Bounces to the outside. Escapes one tackle. A good block on Philander Newton. Now watch, here comes my man Norris with a hellacious block. Goodbye, last horn frog. It is off to the races. And he shows why he is also going to be a track star here at the University of Texas with that great 4-3 speed. 71-yard run on that block on Philanda Newton. He was down for a while. They finally had to help him off the field. And there you see Eric Metcalf. Seven carries, 100 yards. 71 of them on one carry. It was only a matter of time before he was going to break one with his acceleration, his ability to just turn it on the dime and cut up field. Texas now with a little more breathing room. 17 yeah. to nothing in the fourth quarter. Now we could see a blowout. I mean, from here, they come up with an interception, take one in, then it could be a you know, route city from here. But TC has played a whale of a football game. There's no question about that at all, folks. All set for the kickoff. 
Ward will kick off. And it's uh, Brooks and Sweet three back. So this forces the oh, game check plan now. Also back is Allen. TC is going to have to put the ball up in the air. Back, Allen will take the ball on the three. Up to the 20, up to the 21-yard line. Tony Allen on the return, about 18 yards to the 21. It'll be TCU's football at this point. This definitely takes Jim Wacker's ball club out of sync offensively. They no longer can afford to set things up and try to be patient. Uh, Rasco has got to go and get some points on the board. Well, in past games, when they've had large deficits, you haven't really noticed a whole lot of change in their method. Now, this is not as large a deficit, but it's still awfully big for the final period. There's an example. This is the give inside to uh, the running back. First man through. That was uh, tips. And TCU yeah. has not got the ball to Burnett all afternoon. Espinosa and McKinney pinching on the stop. Second down. Gain of maybe one. Burnett will come in with the play. Maybe he's going to tell him to get it to him, huh? Jim Wacker's teams, of course, he played college ball at Valparaiso in Indiana. He's a native of Detroit. Second down and nine. 113, 45, and three coming into this season for his college coaching career overall. Another short game. Jeffrey on the carry. And again, this is a pattern that we've seen, Barry. They just don't seem to be concerned. I, I, it's almost as though we know what we can do, we know what we can't do, so it's foolish to try something we can't do. Right? That's just the way it looks. Five yards, five plays, 91, 205. I'm not knocking Wacker's, you know, theory. But to me, you want to try to get these guys back into the ballgame. One, one side says, let's not make it worse than it is. Yet to me, let's go for broke. Let's do it. Get it done. Well, they got to throw here on third and seven. They shot it inside, but not enough for the first down. Only about a yard gain. So on a play they needed about eight or nine, they got about two. Richard uh, yeah. Peavy making the stop on uh, Gary Ford. First time he's thought about it. That's inexcusable to me to run that short of a pattern. I mean, if you throw it upfield, you still run the wit, you run the chance of getting a pass interference call. 17 to nothing. Chris Becker back to punt. 39 yards his average for this game. Metcalf is back to receive it. He's having to back up. He's got room on the left side. If he cuts inside, fumbles the football, but it'll be retained by Texas. It could not be picked up by TCU before it went across the sideline. So TCU will have the football on their own 32 or 3 yard line, first and 10, leading 17 to nothing with 12.06 to go in the ballgame. Eric Metcalf. I think I said Terry last night. Eric Metcalf. Well, you mentioned Terry. Terry broke down a lot of film and studied a lot of film of various Texas offense. Heard all sorts of spiels and all sorts of propaganda. Was impressed by the fact that Acres undersold. Sold first, come to Texas with his tradition, where you get a great education. But I can't emphasize enough about the track program down here at the University of Texas that really helped clinch it for the Metcalf family. Well, it doesn't hurt to have uh, the track record of the offensive lines that you've had in the past in Texas either if you're running back. I'll tell you something else. Before it's all said and done between here and the end of the balls, this kid's going to throw a touchdown pass. He was a former high school quarterback off a reverse. High formation for Texas. Dodge hands it off to Hunter, who's back into the game, and he picks up a quick seven. Scott Harris runs him out of bounds. Floyd Terrell right there. Floyd Terrell, there's a guy that's used to being around ball carriers. In high school, he averaged nearly 15 tackles a game as a senior. That's an average. That's like in basketball averaging 30 points. The rushing stats, not too close, are they? Second down and five. 71 of those coming on one run. Hunter. Short of the first down, he picks up about two or three. Again, Harris ran him out. Yeah, Harris is a hard worker. You know what he's doing wrong, though? He keeps running out of bounds, and that stops the clock. Texas just wants to get out of this thing. No more injuries. They already lost one key player, quarterback Brett Stafford. That's why we're seeing number 13, the senior for Port Arthur Jefferson, Todd Dodge into the ball game. Metcalf brings the play in. Hunter out. Third down and a long one. You know, we haven't seen tonight Terry Steelhammer. 
He's made some deep snaps, but Akers resting him right now, and Espinosa and Adams do the job of the two technique of the tackle. Yeah, Steelhammer had a, uh, well, he was hurt a little bit last week, and he could have played more, but again, you haven't seen William him. Harris and haven't seen Donovan Pitts. Third and one. A long one. The give to Metcalf, first down, and about three more as he struggles out across the 45-yard line to the 47, where he slides across the end line. Met Metcalf is out rushed the Horn Frogs. Here's the freshman right now with his 104th yard of the afternoon. Breaks it to the outside and goes out of bounds. And Metcalf had been averaging 17.3 a game, only 3.4 for carry, so this may be a game that uh, really will turn him around. He's been playing well as an all-purpose back, not just the running back. Dodge in trouble, big trouble, big trouble. They about made a wish with his yep. two legs that time. Well, you saw Floyd Terrell in there, you saw Spradlin in there, Garden Littles. What you also saw, too, was the experience of a senior. He didn't throw the ball. If he had Hayes open, he could have said, hey, we're up by 17. Let me be a hero and go for broke. Now, uh -uh. Let's not turn the ball over. Let's get out of, let's get out of here with a W. 11-16 to play. 17 to nothing, Texas. Six sacks for the Horn Frog defensive unit. And a flag uh, too close to the sideline. Texas being moved back off the sideline. The players were too close. Look, I'm not taking anything away at all from the valiant effort on the part of TCU, but it's obvious that Texas came out today flatter than a pancake. You can talk all you want about seriousness and purpose, about not looking back. So you got to be behind that white line. Only the coach can be out further than that. And those white lines go down uh, between the 30-yard lines, and that's you can't go down any farther than the, near the goal in the 30. It's a restraining area. Of course, on the other side of the field, it's extremely important. That's where the chains are. They have to have room to operate. This side, on the auxiliary marker. Give on the delay to Norris, the fullback, as he's tripped up at about the 33-yard line. Mitchell Benson, the big defensive tackle, got him around the ankle. That's what we talk about big. We haven't heard too much of Trent Edwards, the freshman from Worthing. Well, he was replaced in the starting lineup by Ron Lewis today. He has played, and he's been on some tackles, but he uh, has not been in as much. Third down, 25. That may have been a right quarterback again. draw, and there was no place to draw it because he, the way he dropped back and he wanted to cut forward, but there was no hole at all. And you're right, Spradlin, he's had a pile of them. He's sort of like the Bill Bates of TCU. He's a kamikaze kind of guy who's played anywhere that Wackers want him. He played his freshman year as a defensive tackle on special teams. Fourth down. Fourth down from the Texas will kick it away. These punters have kept the old leg warm because they've been very busy. Celtic will punt. Brooks back. Uh, he'll take it in the neighborhood of the 20-25 yard line. The officials have a timeout. Clock stops. Got to change football. Steelhammer making the snap. That's the only action he has seen. Still waiting for this uh, play to get underway. And the kick is up. Coming down to about the 23-yard line. And Brooks is run out of bounds at about the 27, where TCU will have it first and 10. They'll put it in play there when we return. 9.20 left, 17 Texas, nothing TCU on Home Sports Entertainment. the excitement of University of Florida football. From the opening kick to the final play, all the hard-hitting action of one of college football's top teams. 
Watch the Gator football replay. The NCAA Women's Championships offer a highway to successful opportunities, challenging competition, excellent education, victories and medals, friendship and team spirit. This and more can be seen at any of the 34 NCAA Women's Championships. Get involved with college athletics. Attend an NCAA Championship this season. For dates and sites, write NCAA Championships, Box 1906, Mission, Kansas, 66201. The scrimmage is at the 32-yard line. Score, Texas 17, TCU nothing. Texas led 10-0 at the half. They scored their second touchdown on a spectacular 71-yard run by Eric Metcalf. That coming in the second half. And their first touchdown was a crazy play. Edwin Simmons busting loose. Just knocking defensive players all over the place. Delanda Newton knocks the ball out of his hand, and Russell Hayes picks it up in the end zone for the Texas touch. David Rasko, the 5'11 freshman out of Houston, Westchester, now a flag, or a whistle, to be precise. Both of these clubs, of course, uh, have some games left. Texas will be playing Baylor at home next week. You think that won't be a big one, as you see the call. And they'll be at Texas A&M uh, in two weeks, and that, of course, is always a big one. TCU will be playing A&M next week, and of course that will be our HSE Southwest Conference Game of the Week. And that's it. They're done. So they'll wrap it up next week. It is 17 to nothing. Texas with 9:18 left. First down, 15. Or Texas uh, Christian has the football now. The ball comes across the game of about a yard or two. Tony Jeffrey to carry. Chalmer Adams in on the play on the bottom. Second down. Another valuable lesson for Jim Wacker's football team. You know, life its own self. Uh, Dan Jenkins' great book was a parody of his alma mater, TCU, about recruiting and buying of players. When that man found out what was going on, he blew the whistle, said, Wacker ain't buying anybody. Kicked the seven players off. It's been a disaster. But a lot of good is going to come out of this for his football team as they get the completion. And Jeffries gets knocked down. That was a little, about the only time they throw the short type pass to the back, it is Jeffries, and Jeffries knocked out Jeffries. Eric Jeffries of Texas, number one, on number 27, Tony Jeffries. Roll left, a high percentage completion. But again, these should have been done in the first quarter, not in the fourth quarter when you're down by 17. They're down at eight, thank you, coach. <laughs> 17 to nothing. Rasko. Jeffrey the blocker. Rasko throws it up the middle and he bounced it. Incomplete. That was intended for Delaney, number 83. But it was underthrown. Of course, they did lose a quarterback to injury in Scott Ankrum, right. but Ankrum was not a run, was not a passing quarterback either. He just had blazing speed. He got Ankrum, he got Rasko, and he got Giles next year in spring practice. You talk about competition. Two of them will have had a lot of experience, Ankrum and uh, Rasko. Here's the kick on fourth down. It's high. Metcalf going to fair catch it. At the 31, 32 yard line, Texas will have the ball right there. And once again, we'll put it in play. If you like to study the form of punters, this has been your game because they've been sure putting it up in the air a lot today. Every time I think of punting here at the University of Texas, I think of the greatest college punt I've ever saw, and that's Russell Erksleben. My, oh, my, how we used to change field position in the mid-70s. Todd Dodge conferring with Fred Akers. He probably aged a little bit today when he saw Brett Stafford go down, but uh, Todd Dodge has answered the call. Well, he's in the situation now where it's really not hard to play quarterback because you've got a 17-0 lead, 7.53 to play. If you can hand off, you can play quarterback. Good crowd at the Memorial Stadium uh, today. Some empty seats, of course, down in the one end zone area and in the extreme corners, but considering the weather, I would have to say it's a fine crowd. It's not Texas football weather. It's more like Minnesota in uh, September. Under thrown and intercepted. Well, that was a surprise, wasn't it? They threw the ball? I'm surprised. Well, I told you about Donovan Pitts. They went to him. 
And the man who got it was Ricky Rugely, and I'm really surprised. I'm kind of stunned. I guess that's why I have nothing to say. Why are they throwing here? Well, just to kind of let the world know that Dodge still has got the ability to go deep. In that case, it's not deep enough. Huh. Was intended for Pitts, who did get in. I guess he wanted to play, huh? So if you get him in there, running deep. All right, here we go. It is first and ten for T. Sealy. Is the give inside again? And that's about as surprising as. Yeah. Uh, no, it's not a surprise. Well, to me, they, they could come out, Greg, and run a trip formation, put a couple of guys in the slot, and try to stretch the defense. Give the passing game the confidence that, yeah, we can score in one play. If you just look at these last two plays, you'd say, who's ahead? <laughs> who's trying to rally in this game? Texas is going for broke. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's Texas that's ahead, 17 to nothing, with 7.17 to go. Sean Millsap and Delaney both wide left. A lot of time, bad pass. Almost intercepted, that was almost, well, like who's it going to? It was too high for Delaney and too low for Millsap. So it's a incomplete pass. Third and eight. And let's see, coming in with a play is uh, Keith Burnett, the Houston Yates X. There's quite a speedy guy. Yeah. Doesn't have the greatest hands, but he's working on them. Got a lot of speed, but he hasn't been a receiver today. Until now. Did he catch it? If he, no, nope. no, I'll tell you what, he looked like he had pretty good hands on that because that would have been an outstanding catch and he had a chance at that one. He would have probably been out of bounds. Let's see, we may have an ISO on this one. All right, he runs an out pattern here. Plants, cuts, where's the football? Rasco's timing on that was not good. Yeah, he would have been out of bounds, I think, if he yeah. had even had caught. When the receiver made the cut, that ball should have been released. He waited until after he made the cut and read it there. But that just comes with timing. you got a freshman quarterback. Fourth down. One of our lower punts. And short. And killed by... TCU at the 38-yard line. Texas will have it at their own 38, leading 17 to nothing with 6.49 to go. Next weekend, we'll be taking you up to Fort Worth and Eamon Carter Stadium as the Horn Frogs take on the Texas Aggies. That's the final game of the year for uh, TCU. The game with important ramifications, certainly for A&M's bowl picture. We'll have it for you on a delayed basis next Saturday night at 10.30 and then Sunday at 9 o'clock. That's Texas A&M versus TCU next weekend on HSE. We may be kicking this one over again. Flag down on the 22-yard line. Well, I'd like to see another punt. Okay, I mean, be the, uh, what about the 20th one of the game? All right, it's a first down, so they don't have to kick it again. First down for TCU following that holding penalty. It was a holding penalty on the defense, uh, which is one you don't see too often when uh, holding on a punt play on the team that is receiving the punt. That's a little rare penalty. Rasko, going to keep it. And get good yardage with it. Down to nearly the first down marker. He's up to the 45. Richard Peavy and Eric Jeffries on the stop. But Rascal picks up at least nine. And if you're, you're watching at home in 21 number six, Stephen Braggs never came up and made it. He had the pitch man in that case. He'll slice inside the corner here. Wrist it up. There goes the corner. His method right there is to take the pitch man, regardless of whether he could have the tack or not. Boy, they look like they lost a yard on that mark, too. That ball uh, is carried up for a one-yard gain. It'll be third down and one. I was just watching where he went out and then where they put the ball in play and looked like he lost another yard. There have been some marks today. McKinney and Hager in on the top tackle. But, yeah, there's Mr. Yeah, the refrigerator. They're calling what, the igloo or the ice box? Yeah, I think the ice, or the ig igloo, maybe. Igloo. Yeah, it's the igloo. Well, there he comes. Mitchell Benson, 288 pounds. Marked up from 265 when the uh, media guys were printed. Uh, timeout. Oops, he wants timeout. Yeah, he, he probably wants to get some rosin on his hand in case he wants to throw the ball. What do you think? Uh, 
I don't know, but... Uh, I don't think so either. Jim Wagger scratching his headset there. That uh, leaves them with one timeout. TCU with one. And Texas has one. Six minutes and six seconds remaining. <laughs> Last week, Wacker's doing his coach's show and his, you know, the, the scoreboard out there and, uh, and Tech kept uh, looking like a computer and some video game. He said, I want to just call him with David Rowe and play Super Frog and forget about coaching and it's escape. <laughs> you can't help but love a guy like that. I mean, he's taken a lot of reps. He, he wrote a, a you know a letter to all this conference coaches about cheating that fell on some deaf ears uh, he's come out with some things a, a lot of folks were called him very naive and stupid for turning uh, you know Davis and the other kids in but you have to admire a man who stands by the courage of his convictions he's trying to make football fun as we're going to see right now with Benson and that graphic uh, definitely tells the story one out of 13 on third down conversions and the one they got Benson doesn't care. Get, instead, the quarterback Rasco does, and they use Benson as a decoy, and Rasco gets the first down. Allard on the tackle, but not before they picked up the first down. You know, that, yeah. that is the value of him almost as much as what he does. He's got to identify a couple of people. I mean, a linebacker and a safety. The safety's got to say, he better not, not, not be coming my way, and the linebacker's got to be gritting his teeth and said, I knew all those hours pumping iron would pay off for something. <laughs> first down. I don't believe it. They actually have a slot over here. Tony Allen is uh, wide left, one of them, as Rasco is not going to throw to anybody. He just runs out of bounds after a one-yard gain. Allard is right near him, so he just stepped out. They had two men on the yep. left side. Allard ran the quarterback, Rasco, out of bounds. But again, they're, they're, he's rolling to the right. The receivers are all on the left. And your point that you made earlier is if he does throw it to him, he's got to throw it way across field. I think people forget that. They think how far the pass was thrown, they see from the 40 to the 30, and they forget that field is 55 yards wide, and if he's on one corner, he's throwing that ball a long way. Second down, 10. Give inside to Jeffrey. Good run by Jeffrey as he spins off the first tackle and picks up about seven, down to about the 45-yard line. Richard Peavy grabbed him. Richard Peavy, number 42. Remember, Barry, when no one wore glasses when they played football? They'd rather be blind than, uh, than, than wear glasses. Each team has just one. It's amazing how many left. guys are wearing them now after Dickerson set a new rushing record last year. Yeah. Third down at two. Rask on the keep. Now the pitch. Jeffries is stopped. Oh, good defensive play by Stephen Bragg. You know, we're talking about Stephen Bragg's early when he didn't make the tackle, he took the option in. There's an example where the corner has got to come up and make the force. And he can't weigh more than 175 pounds. Well, they, they say 173, and if that was before the season, he probably weighs less now. Okay, he reads. The moment he sees that it's not going to be a pass, Alex strings it out, goes PB, ready to force, and just wraps him right up and gets some support from Ty Allard. Well, it's fourth down, and do we have... Uh, da, 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 da. No, we don't. Or do we? No, we don't. Just have extra blockers. They don't have the big guy in, and this isn't going to make it. Nope. Rasco was strung out down the line of scrimmage. Chris Goodleman came up and got help from Richard Peavy, and it'll go over on down to Texas. See, in, in a case like that, if I'm Rasco, I want to call a timeout. You got one left. That's the time for it. They got that play going in too much of a hurry. Well, they didn't make the switch and didn't bring in their extra beef, and they just tried it with extra blockers. There you see extra blockers up front. You know, 73 was the man who was the extra blocker there at Brazil. And, of course, then they ran the other way, so it didn't make any difference. First and 10 for Texas. Four minutes and 21 seconds remaining. Eric Metcalf. Pick up of seven, Ricky Rugely making the stop. Ricky Rugely, the underlying story in this ball game, the injury to Brett Stafford. With Baylor and with Texas A&M standing in the t sippers way to a January 1st state in Dallas, Texas, that could loom very important. And again, it would be poetic justice if Texas were to knock off Baylor and A&M and do it behind the throwing of Ty Dodge. Second down at four. And that's short. King of the two yards by Metcalf. It'll be third and two. 
Scott Harris. Arkansas, of course, came into play this weekend 5-1 and one in conference play with SMU and A&M remaining. So, of course, the A&M game being played uh, on Saturday night and SMU, their final game of the year. Baylor 5-1. and one. A&M, Arkansas, TCU, and Texas. The uh, Arkansas game, of course, being played Saturday night. And the other two, they, they got a test. First down for Metcalf and more. Quick, speedy feed as he picks up about eight yards. He's going to have a lot of defensive coordinators taking deep breaths by the time it's over. You know, the kind that he touches the ball and you go, I hope this isn't the one where he just bursts it up the middle. Here comes Gene Shelton out of the ball game. Champagne will go into play center. Looks like it's a gimpy ankle on the part of Metcalf. Tries breaking it to the outside. Notice the glide he's got when he ducks that shoulder in. You just tell the natural gait he's got as a runner. Yeah, he got kind of twisted over. You can see that uh, ankle was twisted over. 123 bit. yards in the afternoon for Eric Metcalf. And he didn't carry the ball, I don't believe, in the first half at all. The first carry was in the third quarter. Put that on 11 carries. The big one, of course, the 71 yard touchdown to put this football contest out of reach as the Dad's Day crowd of about 70,000 here in Austin gives him a big hand. And I go in the locker room, I'm going to ask Gene Shelton one question. If he has petitioned Fred Akers, Fred Stafford, but he, you know, he, was, he was Gene Gene the Coke machine because they said he was so strong he could bench press the big Coca-Cola machine down there in the weight room. I'd like to see if maybe they're going to put him in once and he could be Instead of the refrigerator, be the Coke machine. <laughs> Sounds like a good idea. Hunter, first down. Cross to about the 27-yard line. You know, the, the impressive Harris. thing about Hunter is he's got great vision. Everyone talks about the speed and the quickness and all that, but he sees defenses. He reads. He comes in. He just checks right there, bounces back, and again he looks to the outside, always looking to see where pressure is coming. No one does it better in football than Tony Dorsett of the Cowboys. Garland Littles and Roosley finally stopping him on the play. First and 10. Ball is on the 27. Hunter again. Bang! Down he was, brought behind the line of scrimmage and a very number happy Kent Trammell. Kent Trammell. Number 26, Charles Hunter. I'll tell you, you can't help but admire the enthusiasm. The These guys are getting the brains beat out. 63 points last week, uh, 51 against Pagel earlier, and these guys keep up coming up high-fiving and, and doing their little dances. you got to love college football for the enthusiasm that it brings. Less than two minutes to go now, minute 40, and Texas leads it 17 to nothing. I want to take an opportunity to remind all of our folks in the HSC viewing area, get out there and support your favorite high school throughout the state of Texas. Play our football team time. You're going to see the best high school football in America right here in the Lone Star State. The kid from Odessa, 17 carries, 50 hard-earned yards. Red Acres conferring things over with Ty Dodge, 136 to go. That was Texas' final timeout. This time it didn't go make any difference. And as we pointed out, it didn't really make any difference the fact that they didn't score, didn't get the clock stopped in the first half, as it turned out. It's just one of those, what might have been important plays. Well, Texas now has the games left with uh, Baylor here, their final home game, and A&M. Now that obviously is a very tough road to hold. They have to hope that one of their arch rivals, perhaps, SFU, can uh, knock off Arkansas. Or perhaps uh, they get good word from the game Saturday night. There's the remaining Longhorn schedule, the Baylor Bears, and then at the Aggies. And I'll tell you, that, that's tough. Play incomplete again. Surprise, surprise, as they throw the ball. It was intended for Monty Daly. The El Paso senior with a minute 31 to play. Well, thank our entire crew, of course, especially those of us that have been outdoors freezing to death all day. <laughs> Got a good view here in the broadcast location at Memorial Stadium. It's just that it's outdoors. Yeah, we're fortunate, though, that there was no rain today on us. 
even though we got the overhang, the way those winds can shift. Again, they set up the screen pass out to Hunter. I'm, I'm a little mystified, but, you know, I've seen so much in college football this year, Barry, that doesn't follow the so-called no. book that I guess I better quit being mystified. And it, it appears right there that's what Fred Akers wanted. He put his hands on Todd Dodge's shoulder and gave him a couple of plays there for the last minute of the ball game. Could he have possibly done that to set up, hoping they'd be incomplete, to give uh, his field goal kicker and a chance? He's going for record. Yeah, I don't know. Plus the fact he gets my makers off his back. See, Danny gets some playing time every time oh, because Jeff he's the holder. Jeff Ward going for his 17th field goal, 49 yards, flat, line drive, good, he got it. <laughs> he's so laid back, though, he just kind of looked at it nonchalantly and got up instead of giving a high five, gave a low five to Danny Akers. So Ward, with his yep. 17th field goal this season, ties the all-time single-season Longhorn record set by John Goodson. <laughs> Watch his reaction here. There's the kick. Little knuckleball. Yeah, Akers is jumping up, and Jeff goes, yeah, so what? That's <laughs> what they gave me a scholarship for. I'm supposed to do that. He had five field goals versus Arkansas, of course. That was the difference in that football game. His dad was an ex-NFL official, Ed. And I don't know, we, we might, it's kind of late now. I should have mentioned this during the course of the game, but if you catch him on the sideline, he's usually off by himself. No, that's not him. That's Bevo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, always one guy down in the truck that's going to try to bag us. <laughs> now, he is normally off by himself, too. Yes. What does Bevo think about these football games? I, you know, you got to think. I mean, here is your big longhorn steer. What the heck am I doing standing out here? And especially every time they shoot that darn cannon. Yeah, but it's better than last week in the game you did at TCU where at the Tech where the SPCA and the Humane Society was going to rest that poor horse. Allen will uh, bring the ball off on the kickoff. Tony Allen strings uh, has strung out and he's brought down about the 15-yard line. A minute 13 left to play. And TCU will have the ball for what more than likely will be one last time. 20 to nothing, the score. Texas. And there's the drive. I want to thank uh, Bill Little, father of David Erspotter, Doug Smith, and the staff here at the University of Texas, athletic director Dwight Stodd, for making our home sports entertainment production a very easy one this afternoon. First down. Rasco going to throw it. Little screen. He's got his man. That's Ford. And he picks up for about. Take that. That was not the number I thought it was. That was uh, Stokes. That's Stone. Stone, rather. I'm sorry. 85. Yeah, he's the kid who dropped the third down pass earlier that bounced off his, uh, his hands. Oh must be late in the game 41 seconds to go another screen this one out the tips uh oh where's he gonna go nowhere he ran right back on the teeth of it he lost yardage on that completed pass Thomas Aldridge Eric Jeffries in there there you see the tail of the scoreboard 227 yards rushing for Texas 53 carries and they uh, didn't really throw the ball all that well. They, they threw it. Uh, they didn't really have to throw it well the way things went today. This may come under the category of winning ugly for Texas, but it was a big win for them in the sense that with the exception of the injury to Brett Stafford, they come out of the game unscathed. They get an opportunity to rest Steel Hammer, Llewellyn, couple of other people on their defense get ready for crunch time the next two ball games. And they keep, of course, uh, the opposition off the scoreboard. Uh, Texas, David McWilliams will like that. Well, you know, Big time. Texas has given up some points this year in some games. So, well, 44 to SMU, for instance. Uh, Tech got 21 on them when Tech in the second half discovered their new offense, which they had not been using all year. In the second half, they got 21. Houston got 24 off of them. Stanford got 34 off of them. So uh, they've given up some points. So their defense will be pleased, certainly, to, to throw a shutout. 28 seconds left, Texas 20, TCU nothing. We'll see TCU again next week. They can actually build off of this, uh, despite the fact that it's going to be a defeat. They have uh, played the Longhorns at home well. 
And the, uh, that ball's caught by Delaney, and he steps out of bounds just as he catches it. Five seconds expire on the clock. Third and about three. Eric Jeffries bounced him out. This would be the first shutout for Texas since 1972 when Houston beat Texas, or beat, uh, when Houston beat Houston, when Texas beat Houston, I said 72-82, and that was a 50 to nothing shutout. And by the way, we also might mention that, uh, of course, this would be the eighth win of the year for Texas as they measure for the first down, and they got it by about an inch. This also would make 18 straight victories for Texas over TCU. The last time TCU won was back in 1967, in Austin anyway. That was 24-7. A real heavy, one-sided series. Twenty to nothing with 23 seconds left. First down. They've had the lights on most of the game. This is the type of day where the lights really have very little effect. In fact, you've got a better picture on television. Delaney with a nice catch for a first down. That was a multiple pattern. They actually had three receivers out there. Now you wonder why weren't they doing that earlier in the ball game? Yeah, I'm wondering, but I suppose some of the fans are too. I was about to say you've actually got a better picture on your television screen than the people in uh, the stadium have because we're able to augment it electronically, brighten it up a little bit. That pass is incomplete. Six seconds left. That pass intended for number 25, Mark Tips. Well, thank Don Geist, our director, and of course uh, Bob Steinfeld, our producer, and all the rest of the people on the HSE truck. You will see some of those names. You'll see all those names in just a few moments. 20 to nothing uh, here with six seconds. Second down. Ten. Should be the last play. Rasco throws the ball. Complete. And out of bounds Burnett, but that's it. Ball game's over. And a final score, Texas 20, TCU nothing. Barry and I will be back to quickly recap this one in just a moment on Home Sports Entertainment.